card just kind of comes at you and you're stuck on the bonnet. Hold on, uh, Creed, have you, you died? Are you switching out a character? What's going on? Uh, well, Creed is stuck in the other system and is accounted for for like the next week. So rather than have him sit out ah. the entire session, we're going to give him an, an NPC sheet. So yeah, he's going to play uh, the Imperial Guard Field Officer Profile as an Imperial Army uh, Field Officer from page 375 of the Core Rulebook. And you can consider yourself to have whatever gear would be reasonable for an Imperial Army Field Officer. Um, and you know who makes sense to be on a ship who's always suffering the heaviest fucking casualties? Jefferson? No. No. Hold on a sec, where are they in the thing? The Solent... Uh, is it Solent? Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Solent Salutiers. Uh, um, exactly, it's I'll a Salutier. PRB, but do you start with that People me? who oh, sally. Or protect sallies. Uh, where are my Salutators on here? Yeah, then, on the Solon Salutators, uh, close combat urban warfare and sea specialists, and you are the captain of 33rd Company, 59th Regiment. On the Jefferson. Okay. Uh, yes, cool. So you, <laughs> due to a mix-up with the orders that is not even slightly Benji's fault, or uh, Captain uh, Grand Captain Koya, rather, um, most of the surviving Soliet Salutiers that are currently with the uh, fleet have been deployed to the alien mothership in what is rapidly becoming our own personal lamenters. And Unto underwater. the Crucible, they shall be as iron. <laughs> Yes, the ultimate twist outcome to the heresy. The Solian Salutiers survivors are inducted as Space Marines, form their own chapter. Uh, cool. Who am I missing? So it's just. Ah, oh, there's Mackie. So I'm just getting my sheet set up. So let's have some reminders from the last session. Mackie wants to send out a message to Havoc Squads about the bridge symbol. We'll remind Ollie of that when we get to Nazim is making a beeline for the warp engine and has just gotten outside. Koya and Cusco are observing the battle from the bridge of the Obsidian Heart. Clattlemox has a Blackstone Club. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, it's human sides, so I guess it looks more like a Blackstone shillelagh. Uh... Potential You medivacs. shouldn't say that around Creed either. I <laughs> Potential <laughs> Medivacs incoming. Uh, Koya wanted to side with Manami Virith, who implied that if the locals died, then their stuff could be stolen. Though so you'd probably need quite a lot of them to die first. Um, not sure who this is from. Take some skins. Oh, it's probably on Nicholas, actually. And definitely on Nicholas. Requisition that astropath from Gazva. Uh huh. Uh huh. That still needs to happen. We need to do that. Uh, we're a bit busy right now. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's just as I like mid combat. It's like the little like notification ping, just like <laughs> reminding me every like ten minutes or something. It's like get that astrophar. Get that astrophar. <laughs> yeah, you do keep hitting the snooze on that reminder. <laughs> yep. Okay. You know what? As he didn't have a huge amount to do last week, let's let's check in with Creed first and foremost. Uh, what should I be addressing your character as? What, what are you calling yourself here? Oh, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of a good, not quite Jefferson. <laughs> oh damn it, Jefferson, Captain Jefferson. <laughs> 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 Captain Yefsan. Yefsan. Yefsan of the uh, 59th Soliot Salutiers. Whereabouts did you deploy on ship? Uh, on the alien mothership. Are you by. Well, I mean, so you've got the remnants of your company with you. Um, sure. Are, did you deploy by yourselves? Are you with one of the Havoc squads? Or are you with the Murder? Who have uh, I'd want to be with a group of the Murder. 
Okay, so in that case, presumably, <laughs> Nazim hasn't really noticed as he's leading the charge at the front and is like... We will have been uh, diligently covering the rear, probably beneath anyone's <laughs> notice during the combat last. And that's from your long experience of fighting with this God's da- uh, with this <clears throat> truth and reason damned legion. <laughs> the best way to hang out with the murder. You remember the slaughters of Galifas? You do not want to be near the murder. In the throes, they don't take prisoners and they don't recognize friend from foe. At least, unless friend is wearing power armor. Uh, I've updated the picture of my uh, my character. It's loading. It's also loading for me. Looks like a purpley boy. A refresher. You know what? I'm just going to open your character sheet, actually. Well, they do look good. I'll give you that. Uh, so. Nazim and or Yefson. What do? Power forwards. <laughs> yes, I think if I recall correctly, we left you just outside the sort of like final slew of corridors slash defensive network uh, before the war oh. engine. War nice. Yeah, let's get, let's get to that bad boy. Just get in there and just Disable it. Okay. How are you approaching this? So far, you have been powering your way through mostly side rooms, uh, one bulkhead at a time, using the sheer momentum of your assault and your uh, chain fist to just carve your way into the enemy ship. However, now you're entering uh, a what is likely to be, obviously you don't know the plans, uh, a somewhat more heavily defended area, and also probably one with more defensive architecture. Just There's YOLOing some... it is a valid option, but I want to give you the option to uh, change if you'd like. Well, well okay. try to change. You are leading a giant murder charge, so... How large are the, are the warp engines likely to be? So yeah, it's 40k, so I'm assuming... I mean, you're talking like a moderately sized building, uh, and they, I don't think they scale up super massively with ship size, but they do still scale up. So you're, you're looking at like, imagine a flat block, maybe a bit larger. Okay, cool. So that's not too bad, really. Like you could run a circle around it and so forth in a turn or something. Not in a turn, no. A few turns. Yeah, if it was like separated. It's it's okay. not likely to be like an organ within a body type of a thing. No, what I'm thinking is we're in a ship which has artificial gravity, correct? Usually, I just, you, don't, you don't tend to address it in 40k, honestly. No, no, but if I burrow down instead and just remove all supports below it, we just I mean, comes, you've got a chain just, fist, you could just punch it. I could just punch it. I'm a bit wary because it's a warp engine. I could just punch it. I would say, especially when you... There's one thing on your ship, other than the main drive, that you build to withstand extreme stress. It's probably your warp drive. That's fair enough. I'm going to yell for my brothers to form up on me, and we're just going to punch straight through this thing. Don't stop for anything. Okay. I will take, we'll call it command over weapon skill to control the raving mob as you uh, swarm into the next room, or the next suite of rooms. Uh, do I get my weapon bonus, don't I? Yes, weapon bonus, but not basic attack. Cool. I know mathematically it's the exact same, but I genuinely feel a lot better about weapon bonus without basic yeah. attack. Uh, uh, cool. No, I'm going to. F- oh, I got one fate. Oh, I probably want this to go ahead. Okay, I'm going to fate it. Yes, dos. That's three dos. As you carve through the final bulkhead between you and the warp drive, or at least where your senescence is leading you. You find yourself pouring into what looks like nothing so much as a giant, unevenly spaced honeycomb. Some passages large enough that even you and your bulky Terminator armor are easily able to pass through, and some so small that not even a regular human could manage it without some extreme wriggling. 
The main thing of note, however, is the unified front the Akareth have established here, pointing more or less directly at you. Three degrees of success, did you say? Yes. Fire opens immediately, and the marines to either side of you, of your vanguard, are immediately lit up, their armor slagging, dead before they hit the ground. You have an invulnerable shield, uh, have an invulnerable save, wrong game system. You have a shield, and in addition to that, you have Terminator armor. It is strained to the limit, but it takes the volley, and momentum going, you throw yourself into the Akareth lines. Behind you, the murder begins to pour through the gap. More fall, but more pour through. Can I get a D12, please, young Nicholas? Let's see how many extra murder members die. Cut off one head, two more shall take its place. Good. You fucking skin hydrants. Nine, plus the two who are already, uh, already dead. That is a total of eleven brothers dead in your assault. Not too bad. To be fair. S- a sixth of your force, I believe? At least the force that are assembled with you, not including the humans, who've been bringing up the rear without anyone noticing. Yeah. yeah, when the last of them comes through, we'll follow in and try and use the charges cover. Get a good position. Okay, and on that, from yourself, can I get a command over agility check, please? Check, test. Yes. Uh, I was at 60. I do have touched by the fates too. Does that mean I have fate points? It actually does mean you have fate points. Ah, shit. I'll use a fate. Oh, one failure. <laughs> Emperor says no. But Emperor... Touched by the fates, touched by my ass. <laughs> he has been touched by the holy ass of the Emperor. Rational, rational ass. <clears throat> Bless so, it, bless did it. you say it's fine. Uh, one doff? Yep. <clears throat> one doff indeed. How big is a standard? I'm just going to work out how big a company of the Imperial Guard is. Army. No, not... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Imperial Army. Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering uh, why you were correcting me then. I think it's about 6,000. No, not... That's, that'd be a regiment. Companies in the hundreds, isn't it? Hang about. Lift music. Oh, uh, 40k appropriate. Lift plat music. What the shit, Lexicon? Why are you taking so long? Cool. You know what? Let's let's do some speedy random rolls. Creed, those are your favorite. How many platoons you got? Give me a D6. Oh, uh, D5 plus one. You have four platoons. Cool. Uh, and then give me... Uh, same again, please, to determine how many squads in each uh, platoon. Oh dear, two nice. squads in four platoons. Two seconds. Like, you are commanding the Solon Salioteers. There aren't that many of them left. <laughs> yeah, they probably do have to merge down quite regularly. Um, <clears throat> cool, and then probably 10 to 20 in a squad, right? So I will take a D10 plus... Uh, what is that? A D9 plus 10? No, D10 plus 10? What's my brain? Ah, fuck it, just call it a D10 plus 10. I know that's a range of 11 to 20, but okay. <laughs> All right. So that's 19 men per squad, meaning that you had 152 men when you landed on the ship. All right. Let's knock an immediate fraction off of that for the uh, initial link ups and like chaos. Uh, give me a D50 to determine what percentage. The. the, the... Nineteen percent, not too bad. 
no, it's positively not. excellent by their standards. Oh, 36, sorry. 38. 38, I can't read today. Why can't I read today? Cool, so you lost 57.76 men, so we'll round that up to 57 men and, like, one guy's arm. Which puts you at just under 100 or so uh, of your army troopers left. And on that subject, uh, you got one degree of failure, right? Yep. So give me a d10 and let's see how many you lose. Four more men. Cool. Takes you down from, we'll call it, 99 to 95. Okay. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. The marines pour through the gap, and they have taken actually three times your number of casualties. You're pulling a pretty cohesive um, rearguard action on, uh, mostly laying down smoke and decent covering fire, preventing the Akareth from following you too quickly. Uh, and then by the time you begin to pour into the honeycomb structure... The marines in front of you have already begun laying in. Their casualties have been heavy. Their fatalities have been heavy, even. But they've got bloodlust and pure rage guiding them, as well as Nazim. Nazim. You... Yes. Can, you feel in your gut, in the, the part of your brain attuned to the Empyrean, that this lattice work, this honeycomb structure, which as you continue to trace through it, only seems to go on and on and on and on and on, that this is the source of the uh, the readings that you took to be the warp drive. But it's like no warp drive you've ever seen. The lattice work does appear to be non-biological. It's mostly made out of what looks like a combination of metal and stone. But a lot of it is covered in this sort of puce, yellowy, disgusting, sticky substance, which seems to adhere to the outsides of your armor, corroding away at the uh, freshly scorched paintwork. <sighs> Bastards. What do? Um, this is weird sticky stuff on this framing. So I'm not seeing anything like solid that is just a warp drive, it's just like a honeycomb structure. Yes. Which is weird, because most of the rooms, you, in fact, everything you've moved through so far, there's been traces of, like, strange organic matter, but, you know, Xenos gonna Xenos. Um, so much of it could be food, as far as you're concerned. This this looks like nothing so much as a, the interior of an anthill covered in snot. Or perhaps, if you were feeling more charitable, phlegm. Oh. I can't feel anything coming from the slime itself, can I? Um, you can try. Go on, then. Uh, you want to roll senescence, right? Senescence, indeed. Okie dokie, I'll take senescence with a hidden modifier. Okay. Oof! Um, what the fuck is that? That's, that's, uh, that's a nice. Um, because it goes off int, is that right? Int perception? Uh, it's perception. It's perception, yeah. Uh, 53... What would it be, assuming um, a plus zero? As we plan... Uh, three dos. Three dos, okay. Senescience isn't necessarily about using your psychic powers, but it is about using your connection to the warp, your experiences with it. The ways in which you see it affect the world. And then watching for those patterns. As your eyes zero in on uh, the gooey substance, the yellow phlegm, now coating the outside of one of your gloves, they begin to spin and blur. You feel a deep and abiding sickness overcome you. Your stomach seems to churn, and it's the only comparable sensation that comes to mind is the same one you get when you've been on a single planet for too long and your Lyman's ear begins to act up. Overcompensating, giving you extreme motion sickness. Whatever you're looking at, it is definitely, definitely psychoactive. Potentially even incredibly so. Psychic, it's alive. Um, right. 
Indeed. Um, I'll radio to everyone, Vox, and anyone and everyone nearby. Um, destroy this goo! <laughs> it's what we've come here to kill! Question? Yes? How do you propose to destroy the goo? Uh, Volkite? You haven't actually tried punching it yet, to be fair. I haven't tried punching it, but I'm assuming it, it's gooey. It's not like you can just punch to destroy. Yeah, was my, my main query. You do have Volkite sidearm. Well, I mean, you don't, but everyone else would have Volkite pistols. Exactly. I'd let everyone else Volkite the shit out of the slimy stuff, and I'll pull out my <coughs> force sword. And hopefully, because I've got an inkling that I know what's going on with the, with the sword and stuff, because I'm like, I think I'm a psyker, and this sword is doing, definitely doing better stuff than it should do, so we'll see. And I'm trying to, trying to if, channel my, my, my psychiness through the sword and just slashy slashy it and see if that works. If I recall correctly, you know you're a psyker, and mm. you know that it's a psychoactive sword. You're telling everyone else that it's not a psychoactive sword. Mm. Exactly. So I'm going to go slashy slashy, and everyone else use a Volkite on the slime. Alright, here's what I would like to ask you. I want yes. you to do me a focus power test. Okay. But I'm going to let you set the threshold you want to uh, put into it. Now this is for the amount of psychic energy you're putting into your uh, force sword. Um... Young Nicholas, speaking as your right. commander, I order you to go all in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, you know what's happening with, here, with, right? He's really, really, really trying not to have to play on the chaos side and the heresy, and is trying to accrue you corruption points. Don't you listen to um, a commanding officer? So I know that um, with, with, my, with my sci focus, which is plus fifteen, I think is it plus fifteen? Plus ten? Oh no, it's best quality, isn't it? Best quality, exactly. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, no, it's plus it's fifteen. You are 15. correct. Yeah, yeah plus fifteen. Um, so I can grab that. Uh, I can't do anything else, I don't think, to increase this. So, and that, that, so that puts me at 75. So if I go 50 for threshold. Uh, sorry, as in you, you set your, uh, which, uh, focus rating, uh, focus power rating you want to go at. So like, fettered, unfettered push. And if so, like, oh, I see. Yeah. Sorry, no, that's um, my fault. I wasn't clear. Yeah. Basically, I want to um, get a good measure for because this isn't just one strike, right? This is you unleashing your psychic fury in a relatively enclosed, if quite cavernous space, uh, trying to get a psychic reaction or at least use your psychic powers to enhance the devastation you're doing. Since yeah. otherwise, you're just whacking things with your force. Sword. So I just do standard, so not fettered, yeah. just standard cast. Young Nicholas, again. Sometimes you, sometimes it feels like you wonder as if your psychic powers are holding you back. They're not. Get back on that horse and eat that horse. I order you to push. I'd, I'd rather not push. What is this fucking opposite world? <laughs> like, I kind of just want us to want to see the bang. Like, I, I love pushing, but I don't think this is the time or the place for it, though. That's, that's fine. You, be, you can be a coward just like your commanding officer. It's okay. <laughs> I learned from the best. Uh, the real, the real uh, heroes here are the Imperial Army best. troopers going in with like not even rebreathers. So, yeah, uh, respirators. Oh, oh, I I that's fair. Okay, yeah. So yeah, a, a, a plus zero test. Okay, so you're doing unfettered. That's uh, so, so yeah, unfettered. Standard cast, yeah. yeah. Un- un- standard yeah. cast. Yeah, standard cast. Yeah, yeah. Okay, roll away for me. That will be four, I believe. Yeah, four. Four degrees four of success dust. on unfettered psychic power usage. Technically a headshot it's as well. Doubles. It's not doubles either, so... It's not doubles, it's fine. You, uh, it's lovely. You, you get to, you know, be, be the coward you always wanted to be. <laughs> a little voice at the back of your head. I'm not sprouting wings today, Ewan. A little voice at the back of your head. I think I'd... Don't know if I'd ask you to roll on the mutation table. Maybe. Do they have a Space Marine one? I was referring to uh, Nuzwell. No, no, yeah, Nuzwell. It was Nuzwell, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just double checking. Okay. It's not really relevant, uh, I'm just kind of interested. Sorry, Creed? 
After he's issued his command, I'll get my boys to try and like fortify any bottlenecks leading into the room. Try and keep them defended while they work on this drive. Certainly can. Yeah, there isn't a mutation table in the book. Does corruption points have a thing? Corruption points must have a thing. Can space trains get corrupted? Well, of course, yeah, with enough chaos. But, no, uh, young Nicholas, they can't. Lick the chaos. <laughs> 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 I can eat his brains, yay! Ah, cool. Space Marines do not mutate, but at 100 points or more, you have fallen to chaos. <laughs> and then after that, I guess you count as a Black Crusade character, and then you mutate quite rapidly. <laughs> Anyone else hear campaign goals? <laughs> yes. Yes, I did, actually. You're right. Well, yeah. I mean, every time that Ewan reruns Black Crusade from now on, it's just going to be, hello, I'm... <laughs> I'm a I'm a fucking insert character from a different campaign. Have you heard the lo- uh, the word of our Lord and Savior, skins? <laughs> skins, 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 yes. skins, skins for the skin god. One of exactly three Quanate librarians in the setting. <laughs> <laughs> so, to be fair, he's probably the one that would Corn would approve of the most. <laughs> he, he does seem to lead from the front a lot. He leads from the front and he hits things with his melee weapons. Like, Cord is like, I'll yeah. allow this. <laughs> and he uses his might of ancients to power up his melee pretty directly. Like, I do. Like, Corn, Corn has a very official no nerds policy, but there's always exceptions. An official no nerds policy because they don't use their might to punch people. Yeah, I never got it as a thing. It always feels like a weird weird thing to me but also at the same time I used to love all of the anti-psychic power bullshit stuff that Korn gets as a kid so I can't bring myself to hate it brass collars are beautiful oh we should give you a Nicholas a brass collar hey, doesn't it pretty much just come down to fuck Zinch no actually um, Zinch is like Zinch is no more a rival than uh, Nurgle is. Slanesh is his big rival. He doesn't especially hate Zinch. It's just weird old lore. It's like Space Marines being... Uh, Space Marines. like Space Wolves being um, anti-Psyker. Psykers used to be a thing, but then it got dropped, and now they just hate Psykers, even though they use Psykers themselves for no good reason. Because, yeah, I know in fantasy that that was the case. So, because uh, I know that not all of it's a literal, or at least a transliteration of it. Like, Corn hates Zinch in the same way that Zinch hates Corn is they hate each other because they're Chaos Gods, yeah. but it's not as particularly I hate you because oh, you're yeah, the opposite. No, no. Um I, I was thinking more it's akin to like I say school bullies versus the school nerds. You know, just two uh, groups that don't necessarily mix. I would say honestly as well, like Corn is less of a bully generally than Zinch. You'll yeah. much more frequently meet redeeming or, or what's it called? People who follow Corn with redeeming aspects than you will Zinch, because like the redeemed version of Corn is is a sense of honor and fair play, whereas the redeemed version of Zinch is still like evolution and the drive to succeed, which is kind of yeah, inherently fairly right selfish. Now. Sorry. Like, oh, I was just going to say like that's the equivalent of waiting to see them until they've graduated from school and gone out into the real world. Like the smart people realize that they can get away with a lot more through manipulative efforts. Yes, I mean this no. is horribly divergent from the like. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, we we should probably pace ourselves, shouldn't we? Um, where the fuck were we at? Right, yeah, young Nicholas. Nicholas was crappy. Had, yeah, as slashy, uh, slashy. Nazim was slashy slashying the uh, Zeno substance. So you do uh, four dos. with Fordos. You feel your sword begin to grow hot in your hand. This is alarming on several levels. One, because you're wearing a Terminator armored glove, and two, because your sword should not be glowing hot. Yeah, I'll get a sword hot in my hand. God damn it, Carl. Your vision begins to swim. And you feel this pulsating, urgent need to vomit. Can get a toughness test, please, young Nicholas. Okay. Uh, get no, you get. Oh, you get plus twenty, don't I? So that's be sixty. Do you? I just failed that. 
Is it just plus 20 now? Or is it a plus 40 because of Terminator armor or something? I, don't know. I think you're thinking think just... strength, aren't you? No, you do get uh, toughness from your armor as well. Yeah. But Terminator is plus... Ah, Terminator is plus 30. Ah, you get time two to see unnatural... You get uh, unnatural toughness times two, but you don't get any pluses to your yeah, toughness, you I don't think. Um, I get plus 10 to resist toxic quality, though. Yeah, that would count. Um, but that slowly means that I'm running at 50, so it's a one doff, I think. Uh, I don't think I've got anything else to help buff me. Your stomach begins emptying itself, though your helmet automatically starts to cycle the vomit away to prevent you from drowning, in the same way it would down near any fluid. It's still an uncomfortable sensation as you begin to fill up as your uh, interior lenses start to fog. As you can smell this foul, wretched stench, see horrifying things floating in the sick that you do not recall eating. That's not nutrient paste. Um, does Nazim have a beard? Good question. Uh, no, he does not. Nazim does not have a beard. He's bald as well. <laughs> Shave his eyebrows, God, no hair. He, he's, he's literally Nazim from the Cloud District. Yes, literally. Yeah. Nazim from the Cloud District has both a beard and hair. Does he? I picture I grabbed he doesn't. Oh, he does have hair, you're right, but he doesn't have a beard. Oh, he doesn't it's have like, a beard, uh, yeah, you're it's right. Like, it's, like, it's, it's grade one sort of hair, it's super short. <laughs> God damn it, yeah, no, he doesn't have a beard, though. Well, it's, it's a buzz cut, hair-wise. He's got some, yeah. but... <clears throat> Nevertheless, you uh, feel the substance begin to dissipate, evaporate, forming a gaseous smoke. All around you, your battle brothers likewise conflagrate it with their Volkite pistols. Those of you who are listening, the rest continue to slaughter their way through the acaret, heedless to their own wounds and casualties. The mist rising, rising, rising all around you. Meanwhile, the attached Imperial Army troopers, what are we doing? I will switch over to the other group. Uh, uh, fortified position and the entrances leading in while they're attacking the thing on the pig. Okay, so I would like two rolls from you then, please. Uh, one, I will take command over weapon skill for starting to, uh, for flooding your troops into the room, uh, and trying to secure reasonable defensive areas. And two, I will take a oh. flat toughness, please. Jesus Christ, is that a one? <laughs> yeah. And the toughness. Issued with you know only what? a las gun, an army jacket, and balls of adamantium. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing the Solian Salutators specialize in, and it's getting better the more casualties they take. <laughs> we will get them down to one man who could just solo the enemy. Ah, uh, yes, the only Imperial <laughs> Army regiment to operate on Highlander rules. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was the doff on the toughness? Uh, three. Let me hop on over to another map real quick. Yeah, you you fought in the siege of Zalona. A lot of the people that you're here with likewise fought in the siege of Zalona, as well as Zaragot, way back in the Galifas campaign. One of the first major incidents where the murder arose. You, more than anyone else, or almost anyone else, in your entire regiment, and potentially even your entire divisio of the Imperial Army, are used to fighting alongside, beneath, and amongst these titanic, skin-ripping maniacs. Smoothly, calmly, cleanly, you and your men slip into the gaps left in the Akareth front line begin throwing up improvised defences made of alien corpses, bits of rubble, improvised and captured guns, whatever you can, pointing back the way you came and laying down covering fire. One by one, you force out the Akareth around you, trying to build out a bulwark, with just enough men at every station to cover enough of a span to keep an overlapping field of fire with the next notch in the honeycomb structure. Up, down, left, right, in all directions. Doff on the toughness test? Uh, three. The only issue that you're running into 
is that the marines you're fighting alongside are raising up with their activity some kind of noxious gas that's clawing at your skin, eating away at your men. More than a few collapse, coughing, choking, spluttering, their lungs ripening and exploding outwards in great bloody sprays. Respirators on, men. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> says your vox man as he dies beside you <laughs> halfway through putting his respirator on uh, <laughs> I will take a 3d10 please for your losses only 15 men that's not bad leaves you on an even-ish 80 oh, so I'll swap to my pistol and carry that vox equipment with me <laughs> for the vox guy bro. <laughs> picking it up as you've done so many times before, this is, by your count, the uh, fifth, sixth Vox Man you've gone through. You check the notches on the used Vox kit. Ah, it's actually the eighth. You <laughs> forgot about the twins. And for the one, you can add plus one to your Touched by Fate. Oh. Meanwhile, back on the bridge of the Obsidian Heart, contemplating... Whatever it's called when you kill your allies. Alicide? I'm just go with friendly fire. Being a dick would be a good alternative. What are we up to, folks? Uh, I think we're continuing to bombard the hell out of the uh, the outer parts of the enemy fleet. Yes. Uh, Carl, you were muted, by the way. I don't know if you were speaking. Uh, no. So they can't shout at me. You uh, receive uh, a decidedly non-unified comms from the uh, main city of Ballast. Uh, it's coming simultaneously from several night houses and has uh, matching comms from several other night houses, decrying it, uh, disavowing it, or otherwise disagreeing with it. But several of the local nightly houses threaten to turn the city's guns on you city's guns which reach up into high orbit if you don't stop bombarding their own troops you dishonorable curs hmm. threatening to turn weapons upon us sounds like treason to me <laughs> declare treason like to, shoot the like anti orbit guns I would like to summon uh, point to a surf to summon him across with a, a vox caster that would presumably broadcast my message to the uh, assembled Barastian forces a surf hurries up to you. Voxcaster in tow. Delicate. This is Tribune Coya. Now listen to this and listen good, because it's only coming once. Get out of the way, you complete idiots. If any of you shoot at us, I will declare right of damnatio upon you, and I will seize your world, your technology, and your lives for defiance of the Emperor's will. Do not test me. End message. Let's see how it goes. I will take. I think intimidate over fellowship. You can have a plus twenty for the giant fleet. Get a get a hundo, get a hundo, get a hundo. Oh, that's fine. That's three degrees of success. <laughs> Responses begin flooding in, mostly from the uh, houses that had already tried to contact you, disavowing their uh, allied contingents. Or, I suppose, co-welders, rather. <clears throat> Insisting that they are loyal subjects of the Omnissiah, uh, and that they officially disagree with the uh, flagrant slander being put out by their compatriots. A few... However, return only more vitriol, calling you an oathbreaker directly, and a foreign lapdog. Though none come anywhere near so far, several ranging shots from the Barast capital city, situated on a uh, large island and taking up most of that island, begin hurtling through the upper atmosphere to nowhere near your fleet, but clearly trying to get something of a solution on it. Some knights begin to pull back. Other knights continue to push forwards. 
and yet more on the surface descend into fighting each other. As the Xenos Armada begins to pick up speed. <sighs> what do? Pick up speed to do what, sorry? Uh, they've been cruising towards um, Ballast's capital city, slash capital island, I guess, rather, <coughs> for uh, this entire time, coming in under the range of its orbital guns. And yes, also... but can I, hit, can I hit them from above, or...? Uh, you definitely can. The issue is it's uh, orbital bombardment, and, and therefore... If I miss... It's not even just a matter of if you miss, right? Like, you... you... You're firing with multiple cruisers into a thick mass in a world with quite an uh, what's it called, but a, a very dense gaseous atmosphere. The environmental damage you're causing is colossal. There's entire sections of the sky that are already on fire. Uh, you've been trying to play it as safe as you can so far, but especially if you try to pour on more and riskier shots or shots going more towards the heart of their armada, then you're going to have to hurry things a little bit more, which means you're going to end up causing more right. and more side casualties. At this point, it's... In which, ca in which case, we shall deploy the tactic known as ram the fuck out of them. Now... Bronsman, you're bring directly us to a new above. heading. Okay. I rescind all coward comments. Are you going to dive bomb the enemy capital ship? No, we're not dive bombing the enemy capital, capital ship, because that's already got our men on it. We're dive bombing the rest of their fleet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I'm glad you still have confidence in your piloting skills. <sighs> so that we don't have any uh, miscommunications on this, describe for me what you want out of this maneuver. So we are currently in high orbit, right? Yes, I, o over I think, the world. Yeah, most we, we're basically on. Yeah. We're on sort of a contiguous parallel with the enemy fleet, which is lower in a lower orbit. Roughly. Exactly. I know we're talking in circles. Yeah. So basically, if we push ourselves into a hard dive and smash down into them... <laughs> you want to ram them? This is some fucking yes. Battlefront 2 level space flightery and I'm here for it. Um, yeah, no, you, you can do that. Um, that will, if nothing else, slow their advance. It'll be... They'd ha be forced to either counter ram, which will kill their momentum, which is, in this circumstance, extremely deadly, uh, or... They'd have to try and go around you, which is difficult when the sky keeps catching fire. There are islands falling out of it where they've been blasting them. There's like massive rubble cloud tornadoes tearing through the gas giant's upper reaches. Uh, not to mention the pissed off jump knights just looking for a gap in anyone's void shields. Now, I will remind you that uh, due to like trick flying t um, issues last time and like the amount of uh, sky islands and pollution in the upper atmosphere going on, well, you know, pollution for the battle. You are down most of your destroyers. They're not destroyed, but they can't get it, uh, as well as your civilian conscript uh, or press gang ships, rather. Um, they they can't get into the the fight easily. That's They're, fine. So it's going to be. I shall I shall order them to to create a cordon around the planet. Any enemy ship that attempts to escape shall be destroyed. That is fair. Okay, I will take... Hmm. Creed, I apologise now if I destroy the Obsidian Heart. <laughs> it hurt too much. Well, I'm, I'm dive-bombing an enemy fleet into a gas giant, like... Too, too much is it's crushed to nothing. <laughs> my, my, my brain fridge! Please don't destroy it! <laughs> My cult based around the ship. <laughs> I think this is what happens when we call Benji a coward too much for two weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> he just destroys Obsidian Heart. Uh, okay, cool. I will take Operate Void, or whatever it's called, Pilot, um, over... I'll let you roll over Fellowship, and I will give you a plus ten for... It's not that it's not a difficult manoeuvre, but it is a direct manoeuvre. <laughs> okay, here we go. That is a re-roll with my remaining fate. God. Oh. That's the path. That's the path. God I'm damn it. destroying the obsidian heart. God damn it, from a 96. Do you know how Almost. much I was looking forward to most of your fleet driving directly into a gas giant? We'd never let you live it down. <laughs> It'd be the craft world all over again. <laughs> 
I learned. This time we're going straight to the middle. <laughs> yes, there are nearly a few uh, mid-air collisions as you start to, especially with islands, uh, as the cruisers of your fleet and those destroyers that made it with you begin to pull into a long, low descent. By and large, they're not looking to ram anyone directly, but they are looking to, um, as I understand it, and please correct me if I'm wrong, sort of intersperse or interpose themselves inside the enemy fleet formation as it's going. That's going to result in some collisions, but some more controlled collisions. <laughs> I think this probably calls for an odds or evens. Let's see how the casualties stack out. Uh, what was your DOS? Just one. Just one dos. Okay, cool. We're going to call it odds or evens, but if it's a hundo or under, then it's a pass regardless. Cool? Yeah. Uh, call odds or evens for me? Uh, evens, no odds. It, it fucking works. That's the first <laughs> trick shot fleet maneuver you've actually got off. The previous two have not worked. Nope. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. At times the charm. The enemy fleet may vastly outnumber you, but they're probably not expecting a ramming maneuver from above. They are not expecting a ramming maneuver from above. Only a complete madman would descend, more or less, th would descend extremely rapidly towards the surface of a gas giant, knowing that if they don't hit the retros at the exact moment, then they're fucked. It'll only be a half-hour descent, followed by hitting crush depth, and then everything's screwed. Nevertheless, one by one, your captains throw themselves into it, the members of Tactical Company firmly convinced that they should follow their tribune anywhere. He's the only thing keeping them, uh, uh, keeping them out of madness and skin lust, and if he says dive bomb, dive bomb, and if he says drop slam the gas giant, then by the Emperor they're going to drop slam the gas giant. Halfway through the descent, the Akareth realize what you're up to. Counterfire starts drifting up from below. Your own batteries, as your ships roll or yaw slightly to either side, bringing their guns into range, begin to whip out towards the alien craft as you engage in hyper close level, uh, close range fighting for Voidcraft weaponry. Now, to, to, you know, contrast this Titan weaponry is generally held to be small Voidcraft, wep Voidcraft grade weaponry, most of the time, depending on the type of weaponry. Some of it falls a bit below that, some of it tends more towards the like, oh, that's actually kind of medium range. You have, at l I want to say, at least 12 cruisers at the moment, right? Yeah, about that. Plus the Obsidian Heart, plus we'll call it somewhere between a dozen and two dozen destroyers that actually made it down. The enemy has their mothership, they also have like a dozen slightly more than that cruisers and like somewhere in between 30 and 40 destroyers, I believe. All of whom are armed to the teeth on both sides. The mighty jet knights caught in the crossfire are thrown about this way and that as the atmosphere ignites around them. Entire islands falling from the sky, collapsing onto ships, shattering void shields, boarding torpedoes flying this way and that, Akareth counter-boarding missions coming straight at your ships, your own uh, armsmen and the remnants of the Imperial Army that you have with you desperately counter-deploying, uh, as well as those poor few Imperial Army who'd already been deployed to the surface, now there, as fucking Lance Battery stuff starts to go off at close range, tearing through entire regiments in the blink of an eye, evaporating colossal islands. The skies rain shattered metal, shattered rock, and shattered flesh. Vox transmissions are all but cut off by the, uh, overwhelming amount of firepower being poured this way and that. Which means for the boarding crew, all that the marines know is that their contact with the Obsidian Heart is suddenly sundered. <gasps> Let's uh, double check in with the Apothecarium. Kuzco, what are we up to? Uh, I believe I was on the bridge uh like, Last ready to get merry, like, while yeah. we watch the fireworks <laughs> go down. 
<laughs> oh, our sick party's been slightly disrupted. <laughs> so instead of celebrating with some fireworks, I'm now drinking to maintain a somewhat level head in the situation. Armsmen running to and fro, servitors malfunctioning, the like background radiation you can see on your uh, helmet ticking up even within the ship, uh, the void shield of a craft in front of you, an Akareth destroyer, dissipates and seconds later it's taken down, not by enemy fire, but by a colossal island falling directly on top of it as its gaseous inner reserves give out. Uh, and the ship is simply crushed by sheer weight of rock and dirt down into the upper echelons of the gas giant's atmosphere there to fall to its doom you pour yourself another glass of amasek and wonder how the other medicae are getting on with that paperwork oh yeah forgot about the paperwork <laughs> uh, by the emperor's blessing may that not be us next as, uh, as if to answer your almost heretical prayer The ship shudders and falls an entire meter through space. Well, through. I take it back. I take it back. I don't need a blessing. I take it back. (laughs) The uh, the crew thrown up into the air and then slammed down. You see more than one wheeled servitor peel over to the side, keel over to the side, even completely unable to self right, screaming in error and frustration as they're unable to fulfill their basic programming. Rock skitters off the void shield. All around you, you see a flurry, a scree of stone slide down the outside and pour off and down into the gas giant. Okay. Meanwhile, boarding crew, what are we up to? You've uh, been... I believe the Space Marine contingent has been hacking away at the goo and the Akareth uh, in equal measure, whilst the army are doing their best to form a re- I, I was going to say doing their best to form a rearguard, but they literally are doing their best, and it's an excellent rearguard. <laughs> uh, looking up and around, it, is there anything producing this slime, or is it just there? Not that you can see. Uh, that said, one disadvantage to this massive 3D honeycomb uh, is that there could be any number of, of hidden chambers throughout it. Past a certain point, it all just looks like a nest of branches and lattice work. You feel a strong headache coming on, something almost entirely different to the uh, turning of your stomach, and smell a foul, strong smet- uh, smench? stench, like rotting eggs, brimstone, sulfur. A direction to it, or just general? All around you, all encompassing. Uh, you wheel sensing something behind you your chain fist already whipping out and there across the sort of small latticework chamber you find yourself in you can hear shouts and cries and screams elsewhere both from the uh, humans that you've apparently now realised are following you and the Akareth and even some from your own warriors a larger than normal branch a slightly thicker one, not abnormally thick just sort of coincidentally thick there's a moderately sized flat surface on it, covered in goo. Your force sword comes up, ready to slash it to pieces, arm already in motion. You fancy you see a face. Just two thin eyes. A dash for a mouth. And it curls for a brief microsecond into the most entertained smile. What do? Kill it! Uh, force does it look like something? Going. Yeah, as I say, it's just like slash it, slash it, slash it. It's, it, it's a face in the goo or the or the whatever, right? Face I'm in assuming. the goo. Yes, you can see the. Wall yep, yep. Slash it then. Yep. Hundred slash it. Just kill, kill it, kill it. You uh, annihilate it. You hear a voice behind you. Welcome. And as you turn, your sword already flying out. The face is reformed on a different wall. Your sword flashes out again, and again the face is destroyed. The wall, uh, the wall, the room seems to fall silent, other than distant screams. What do? Face doesn't reappear again. Uh, Senescence of a perception, please. Plus twenty. Okay, that's a one. Nice. 
And that's a one. <laughs> it is a one. Two that's, ones. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's a plus twenty as well. That is with a plus twenty. Plus twenty doesn't really matter at the point you get a one. Um, no, it's still five dust. It's a one. <laughs> it's a with one, a one. Nicholas. <laughs> Inherently, it's better. Yeah. The the DOS doesn't really enter into it at this point. Fair enough. In fact, if anything, I would say I'm usually more inclined to go like a one when it was a ten or under is almost more impressive to me than a one when it's like ninety or under. Yeah, that's fair enough. <clears throat> so you feel a presence watching you. You turn, wheel another portion of the room, the face. A lash of your sword and it's gone. You feel that presence again, instinctive, heavy. If you'd like to add ally face to your talent sheets, or ally, ally mysterious face? face. Mysterious face. Do I know this is an ally? <laughs> uh, you don't. It, it's just... It's you can call okay. it uh, contact mysterious face if you'd prefer. Contact, yeah. Hello, Ollie. How's it going? So no, Nicholas just got a one and is immediately engulfed in heresy. Oh... You know what? I'm not surprised. Yeah, you know, fair. No. it happens. There's a <laughs> face appearing in weird psychic goo stuff that I keep on slashing, but it's like it's leading me around to slash it. It's yeah, funny instead that... of finding the warp core, he found a pile of goo and then started attacking it, and now it's producing a face and trying to talk to him. Wow, you know, you know, like, he, like three years ago, I would have started screaming, you know, a little bit before, being like, "Oh my god, this is a but Nick getting a one and you know, smashing up some spoopy shit." Doesn't block, doesn't phase me anymore. It really should phase all of us, but it, it doesn't seem to be phasing It's a weird us. demon face thing. Hey, you said it, not not us. Um, Nick, you because we were talking about corn earlier. I'm like, it's corn, it's corn. Maybe it's Nurgle. You feel the face reform again and again. You hound it room after room after room until eventually you come out in a giant latticework chamber, one far larger than any of the rooms you've been in so far, and realize that you're actually quite far away from the rest of the murder. Or from your Imperial Army auxiliaries. In front of you is a colossal, solid stone wall, perhaps 30 meters across. The face reforms in greater detail. Now you can see smaller fractal faces making up individual blobs within it and once again it smiles at your wide toothy smile leaving behind trace tiny faces exact replicas of itself welcome uh, uh, this wall does it like I could just take it out with one punch with the chain or the, no uh, you need to test? really hack at it uh, if I rather than my ancients Use my might of heroes. Is it my heroes? Might of heroes. Difference? Uh, so ancients gives me extra damage and piercing. Might of heroes gives me extra strength. Plus five for every sci- uh, for every um, um, sci- rating. So I get a plus uh, twenty. Well, I'm which then gets push. doubled. And Said it- Ewan with a small erection. <laughs> no, he what? already turned down a push once this session. Yeah, pushes pushes are hard to get off. I'm, I'm not, I don't think I, I'm going to push, but I think a plus twenty on top of my that was his sixty. I'm the that cap for strength. Yeah, uh, that would definitely contribute. I think. Yep, let let's do that. Let's switch into my heroes and just just take this fucking wall out. Declare psi rating and cast. Um. So five for everyone. My strength right now. Because we we double the bonus, don't we? It's plus thirty for the power army. You don't double. 30. You don't double the bonus. You get um. You, you get uh, you get the bonus, and then it it gives you extra degrees of success. It doesn't make the yeah, test yeah, yeah. easier. It makes the success better. Yeah. So I've got, I've got plus thirty from the armor, though. So thirty, which means strength is seventy-one. So I just need two. Uh, oh, so I need twenty. Yeah, I guess we're going to go with the full then. Um, non-fettered, just so rating four. Unfettered so rating four. Okay, I believe in you. Get a one. Get a double. Oh yeah, double would be lovely. Ah, uh, I don't have fate to be to, to be do it either. Yes, fate into a hundo. Fate into a hundo. No, I, I don't have the fate to do it. Oh, fair. I don't have fate, unfortunately. So it fizzles. 
you try to access your psychic powers, but feel like something, almost like a colossal hand, is just clenching around what you would never term your soul, but perhaps your mental focus, the extrusion of yourself into the Empyrean. Yeah. Um, does that say... Wait, no, actually, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. I only did 60, 75... Yeah, that fails because there's no other bonuses. Yeah. But you've got a si- remember, you've got a psi focus. Yeah, it's, it's 60, then plus 15, so it's 75. Um, the face so continues sure. to speak. I've been waiting for you. Nazim of the Cloud District. <laughs> this is Nick laughing, not Nazim. Please continue. You show so much promise. Will you allow me to... You punch the wall. (laughs) The goo simply reforms. The wall seems almost remarkably resistant to your chain fist, barely chipping. Aid you? Here? Now? Nick, Nick is processing law stuff right now. So, so like, do we do, we don't know about demons, do we? You, and as a psyker and someone who's been through the warp, know the like official imperial line, which is that there are like strange trans-dimensional might. aliens. You know yeah, that there are strange forbidden law webway as well, and yeah. there are demons in the webway. You know that there are strange trans-dimensional aliens that live inside the Empyrene. You wouldn't call them demons. And they're, they're just, like, a particularly weird Xenos form to you. You also wouldn't be familiar with, like, the, necessarily how they operate or or their f- specific forms, but you know that there's alien life that lives in the Empyrean. This could also just be a standard human psyker doing this. just a very strong one. I suppose, technically speaking, this you wouldn't be, even need to be This could be many strong. things. Be many, things. Be many things. And I'm a man of learning. I what mean, are you? Be, this could just be a horror of old night, for all we know. The wall... Blinks. I was born so long, long ago on a little planet far, far north and west of here. Through my life and my services, I obtained the favor of powers. Now I exist outside of time and space. When I look at you, I see such potential to do the same. You answered me. What are you? I was man. Now I am man shorn of flesh. Shorn of want or need. Man pure and unfettered. The wall drips. One of its faces peeling off and splatting on the floor. Pure joy writ large across its features the entire way down. Are you part of the Xenos Scourge? Or are you just projecting yourself upon it? The face scowls for the first time since you've seen it. The Xenos scum enslave me. Force me to do their bidding. Force me to keep their craft... Mobile. I was like you once. (laughs) Please. For our shared history, destroy this place. Free me. Defeat the alien in the name of mankind. Ooh, that was some very precise wording there. He's got me on side as well. <laughs> Tell well, me what I must destroy. The first time he meets one, young Nicholas immediately <laughs> makes the fucking deal with a demon. <laughs> um, I, I, just, just, uh, just, just be wary of the wording there, Nick. Notice, notice he, uh, he phrased mankind as mankind and not Imperium or such like. Well, human, human, xenos, xenos. Yeah, well, mankind. You- Exactly. Are you implying there's a difference between different factions of mankind? There's only the uh, compliant and the yet to be compliant. Uh, exactly. I'm saying the ones who are yet to be compliant call it mankind, and the ones who are compliant call it the Imperium of Man. 
That's a exactly way. Well, <clears throat> if, if he is human and or was human and wants to destroy, d- help me destroy the ship, I'm more than happy to help him destroy the ship. Would you? Wait, Allow the ship me the to gun? show you the way. Show me. Let, let's not be hasty. Is this the ship with the big gun? This is the mothership, yeah, yes. Sh- this is the ship with the big gun. Nick, why are you destroying the big gun? Okay. <laughs> Something I, I presses the up the ship, okay? <laughs> hard and spiked against your uh, mental being. Your extrusion into the Empyrean. I will take a willpower test at a minus 40, please. Fuck me, okay. Um, Get a one. Get a one, <laughs> smash that demon one, yeah. straight back to the fucking warp where it whence it came. Be oh, holy, young Nicholas, for uh, once in your life. Second time we have Nick possessed by a demon. <laughs> the first time he killed two point, he killed around two billion people or six hundred thousand people. I forget, but there's a lot of people. Second time, Very, to be fair, he killed more than people than that when he was on Venus. Probably, uh, I have resistance uh, psychic power. Uh, yeah. Any bonuses from that? Yeah, that would count. <laughs> Do you have a psi focus as well? That should give you. A have, uh, yeah, this is a. This is it's not just a psi. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not focus. Yeah. Um. Cool. So resistance gives you minus. Oh, a plus ten. Yeah, plus ten. So yeah. net plus thirty. What? Minus no net. 30, isn't it? net no, minus, minus thirty. Yeah. Sorry, minus thirty. Um, <laughs> so I had to nip that one okay. in the bud real quick. Yeah. <laughs> get away, get away. Doesn't you, doesn't get the one. Terminator armor doesn't come with psychic protections. Okay, oh, yeah, it's of course, yeah. I, I don't know my psychic could either. <laughs> so. It's true. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that this is, the, the psychic could design to prevent. I believe in you, Yon Nicholas. You, you, Nicholas. You can do this. <laughs> I have no willpower either. So, by the Emperor. How do you have no willpower? I succeed! <laughs> nice. <laughs> One dos. Very nice. You do not oh. gain any corruption points. But if you'd like to upgrade your contact to a peer now. Oh, Lord. And uh, <laughs> on top of that, you feel a strange, rusted knowledge start to seep into your being like melt water from a glacier. Your vision begins to tint brown, the taste of blood, coppery on your tongue. Coppery and foul and rotten. Your joints ache, your bones almost feel to sh- uh, feel like they shrivel. The face all but falls off the wall in front of you, falling utterly silent. And yet, new thoughts swirl around your brain. A map, a latticework. A honeycomb of structures, of corridors, of places and things. Stretching out to form the veins in a vast organ. A corpus stretching out for miles, kilometers, in every direction. With a strange and unknowing yet utmost sense of clarity, you feel exactly where you are on the Xenos mothership, and more to the point, exactly where everything and everyone else is. Oh, I definitely want to capture this ship now. You may consider yourself to now have an encyclopedic knowledge of where everything is on the Xenos mothership. Oh, beautiful. Um, I'm going to... So, still same objective. Uh, Stop the warp drive. I oh, sorry. think we should skip over to someone else. We've been on you for a bit. Here. There. So That's fair plan uh, by all means. But meanwhile, back at the uh, defensive line, the Solian Salyateers. How are we doing, Captain Yefson? Oh, uh, I mainly just want to keep holding, but I also want to make a backline slash storage thing and see if people can start uh, gathering any grenades or ammo arms that have been lost through the battle. Anything that looks explosive. Yeah, I mean, you're still riding high off the one. Um, so I will take a... Do we have a slight of hand? Oh, I suppose it'd be awareness, right? Yeah, awareness over perception, please. Oh, no, evaluation. We've got evaluation. Evaluation over perception, please. Uh, 
so you thought Hamilton. I'm gonna was, I'm gonna give you a, a plus twenty on this because I feel like immediately and promptly scavenging the arms of the fallen is probably a Solian Salutier special. Well, it'd have to be by now. Look, it's not their fault they keep dying. The man in front has the rifle. The man behind picks up the rifle. Be two successes. Two successes. Yeah, no, you're you're the Akareth are mostly using uh, either human patterned or human obtained weapon or in many cases human inspired weaponry. You're able to source a goodly amount of grenades from just their corpses, let alone the corpses of your own guys. Not to mention <clears throat> quietly liberating grenades from the dozen or so fallen Astartes in the breach. <laughs> The uh, rest of the murder has like spread out and off into the honeycomb around you, so they're somewhat distant from you at this point, giving you a little bit of breathing space. What do? Uh, once we've got a stockpile, I'll send a couple of runners to see if they can find a marine commander, ask them if they need any help destroying the goo, present them the grenades. Is entirely fair. Um, actually, is it? Uh, it would be a marine commander. They've probably got a sergeant or something, and you might have an idea which one is going to be the least deadly. Uh, I'm just going to nip to the toilet real quick. Were you asking, Creed? But someone might also want to update Ollie on what happened with the Armada. Oh, okay. Am I dead? <laughs> no, no. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I... the whole, there was a whole thing. Okay, I'm going to have one guess things here. Have happened. I'm going to have a have guess happened. that uh, I was on the ship and it warped somewhere and now you guys don't know where I am. No. Um, basically, the enemy ships were advancing on the enemy capital too easily because the jetpack knights wouldn't get the fuck out of the way and just let me shoot them from high orbit. So I slightly dive-bombed the enemy fleet. Okay. Okay. And when, we're now engaging them at arm's length with... All the attendant craziness that ensues. Okay. Benji, this is why we don't put you in charge of our martyrs. <laughs> Look, they called me coward so often, <laughs> none shall call me coward now. No, no, they, they definitely won't, it's true. Yeah, it's probably a failure if you, if you fail again. <laughs> well, does that mean know, that the, uh, the, the knights are still like, slamming into the side of your ship? No, um, they seem to have mostly backed off because of the actual health gate that's being that's being created between the two fleets. Yeah, you just like I can't imagine there are many you know islands around you that don't have very very toasty uh, space whales, whatever the fuck they were. Yeah, I think Barras is going to take a fuck of a hit from this, but they will recover. It should be fine. I mean, it's a gas giant. Most of the like the, the energy you pump into, you know, the gas giant itself is probably. Well, no, it's be... more like the floating islands will need to be replacing. But we've got orbital plates; it's fine. The Mechanicum can sort them out. I'm sure they have thousands of islands. I thought we want to make sure they die so we can take their stuff. Well, I'm going to be looting a whole bunch of stuff anyway. But like, I, I'm not going to not going to say we'll completely abandon the world. Let's just say we're all going to have a slight upgrade from our Tommy suits. You do and, not yeah. want to get yourself wired into a night suit. It's not that no, you can't pilot we're it. Not gonna, we're not yeah. going to wire ourselves into the night suits. We're going to get ordinary humans to do that. In, in Hell, let's put the Solent Salutiers in them. In game yeah, I terms. feel like we were going to ride the night suits, like on their shoulders or on their backs. Yeah, or something. basically. Yeah, exactly. In in game terms, uh, putting yourself in a night do. suit would yeah, it would like no, but putting it into game terms. The closest analogue would be... Well, no, oh, not necessarily a non-standard see. game over, but I would probably intermittently take control of your character when you try to do something that goes against the operant conditioning in your mind. We did talk briefly about having night suits as a one-up, but... Yes, a- that was... Uh, those were for Knights of Taranis night suits, which don't mind control you. Um, well, they don't mind imprint you, but these these are definitely not those. Yeah, okay. Um... Cool. Okay, so I have been filled in. Um, interesting. Yeah, Nick, credit to Benji. Know... Uh, uh, Nick, are you going to try and blow up the ship with everyone on it? No, no, no. I, I th- I've got a, a perfect map, basically, of the ship now. So I'm going to go around and try to just cut off all the arteries to the heart so that, it, that everything just shuts down. Do you mean the main Or at least the, 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 the warp engine does. Yeah. yeah, yeah right. Everything everything but the engines, basically, and that, mm-hmm. the navigation. 
I'm going to shut well, down. So. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, meanwhile, I believe we were with the Soliot Salioteers. Uh, you wanted to try and send a runner to find us non-crazy space marine, right? Yeah. Or Nazine himself. He's been barking on the box. Cool. Uh, maybe pick one or the other, and then we'll give you the role dependent on that. Alright, I'll send them to Nazine. That'll be a funner journey for him. Yeah, you can see where his friend or foe tag is. It's just like miles away from anyone else. Like, what the fuck's Nazim doing? The Ardsman shows up in the warp with a box of grenades. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. Seconds after the face <laughs> falls off the wall in front of you, Nazim, you're, you're processing all of the, these feelings swirling around you, this knowledge in your brain, this emotive understanding of particular things around the ship. When a Solian Salioteer, like, staggers into the, the room behind you, or out of breath behind his uh, standard issue uh, rebreather, carrying what looks to be a giant crate filled with grenades. <laughs> My lord! I was, he was instructed to bring grenades, right? Yeah. So ask if he needs any help with getting rid of that goo through the open box about destroying the goo. My lord, per your orders, Captain Yefson had us gather up grenades. He sort of slams the box of live grenades down onto the ground in front of him. <coughs> uh, do, they, do they have... They didn't have any heads up or anything, do they? Uh, a heads up display? Yeah, of like map or like telling them to go here, 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 or here. Uh, they've got some standard friend or foe targeting recognition, but it's fairly primitive. They don't have like uh, map markers in the same way that your helmets do. Okay. So... Uh. And they don't have data state or map or anything like that to help, do they? They probably. I mean, they've got uh, squad vox, and they've probably got. Um, there's probably a data slate somewhere, but it, like, like if nothing else, it's probably not getting great reception. It's fine because if I if I can download a a rough map to to the data slate and say put grenades here, 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 here. These are, like, these are weak points. Uh, you, these wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to sketch it out in that level of detail. Like no, that, I didn't think so, place. yeah. Um, Not unless you have like a relevant speciality of some kind. Yeah. Profession um, architect or something. If I can direct him to major clusters of glue, of goop, then... You actually... I don't know why, but you don't feel like the goop isn't uh, is as important as you thought it was. In fact, if anything, there's something in your head telling you to to more or less leave it be. Instead, there are specific to you, seemingly random clusters within the uh, area that you still think is probably the warp drive. You just don't know how. Um, which you your uh, emotive knowledge is suggesting you destroy. The chambers seem okay. alike to any, uh, just like any other chamber. I try to direct him to those chambers. Say, so destroy these. Or like, you destroy the ones on the, on the right. I'll get the ones on the left. Sort of thing. It's probably going to be a bit complex for him. Like, if you imagine, so you imagine a honeycomb, right, in a hive. Yeah. You know, like a giant latticework structure, and then pick random cells within that honeycomb that you know you need to destroy. Okay, let's direct him to a few. Does it feel like there are any reinforcements coming our way? There's a shit ton of reinforcements coming your way. Like, they're flooding um, towards you. You're very likely in danger of being overwhelmed sometime in the not-too-distant future. I'd like to direct him, and whoever else has grenades, whatever, to the main entrance points they're going to come in and destroy the entrance, basically, block it off. Okay. To slow that- the, the, the come of reinforcements. <laughs> Phrasing. Um, that you can give instructions for, yes. You'd be able to tell him, like, this is where the main entrance is, you need the Sony and Sally Tears to redeploy. <laughs> With a groan and a salute, the soldier hacking off bits of blood. Block this the- entrance by any means necessary. Blow it up, I don't care. Block it. The soldier <laughs> picks the crate back up and begins hightailing it back towards his captain. Um, I'm going to... Sorry, uh, Nicholas, we've still been on you for a while. <laughs> cool, okay, right. We'll, we'll get back to you, I promise. It's all right. <laughs> Meanwhile, just speedily check in with the other two before we do Ollie. On the bridge of the Obsidian Heart, engaged in this intense firefight, what is up, Koya and Kuzco? Uh, Creed, did you have anything specific you wanted to do? 
that. I mean, Carl, did you have anything specific you wanted to do? Um, yeah, I was going to, well, considering the developments in the current state of the Obsidian Heart, I was going to check for casualties on board. Oh, yeah, they're, they're mounting up extremely rapidly. In fact, as you tap into the uh, Medicaid Vox network, it becomes rapidly apparent that uh, the rest of the Apothecarium have stopped doing paperwork and moved on to emergency triage. I love those boys. That's exactly what I was going to tell them to do. Fair, fair. I'm going to stay on the bridge for emergency on-hand support in case it is required. Oh yeah, there's casualties up here as well. There's even fatalities up here. Like as as mentioned, a bunch of people were tossed like a meter into the air uh, just a little while ago. So from that alone, you're dealing, you're looking with people who <laughs> sprained ankles. Not the worst, but doesn't really help you. And more than a few that like landed on something pointy. There's a couple of people impaled around the place. Uh, servitors with biological components that are just not working correctly. That could use some basic, you know, restorative treatment type of thing. Okay, I'll, I'll start tending to the most severely wounded. Okay, so here's what I will ask you then. Do you want to go for quality of care or qu- and then prioritize the most necessary slash most important cases or quantity of care and try and get as even a coverage as you can for everyone? And then we'll give you a test based off that. Um, I'm going to go for the, like, I say most senior personnel, but those that are most valuable. That's fair. So quality focusing on the people who are, to your mind, most important. Yes. Cool. I will take a Medicaid check at minus 10, please. Ooh. Yeah, no, uh, I'm going to fake that. Oh, go on. Like, I mean... <laughs> oh, well, psychic phenomena. Yeah, right. Uh, it's a degree of failure. Why can't your Nicholas ever get doubles? <laughs> Have you got to deal with, like, some demon, I imagine? Would be one hell of a plot twist. He avoids having to deal with demons in character mm-hmm. by dealing with demons out of character. <laughs> the young Nicholas story. <laughs> Don't tell them. We, we knew young Nicholas. We always knew. I mean, if there's anyone who would sell their soul to avoid having to sell their soul in character, not thinking that one through. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but... Wow. Uh, where were we at? What was your doff there, Carl? One doff. One doff. Yeah, you're you're working your way through, but there's just so many of them. Minor injuries mounting up, becoming medium, major, or extreme injuries. There are broken arms and flash-fried faces where uh, cogitator banks have suffered damage. People who have been, as mentioned, like tossed onto decorative spikes and actively impaled. Uh, more than a few members of senior bridge crew are just b- bleeding out. I am grumbling about the placement of decorative spikes all over this place. <laughs> it may look pretty, but Jesus Christ. Look at the amount of people who are just impaled. Why is this structured like this? You do the best you can. But, as it slowly dawn, uh, and this slowly dawns on you, you might well be looking at a losing battle. And your ship has the most qualified apothecaries on it, not to mention the human medical staff. Meanwhile, Koya, what are you up to? I will be commanding my forces to concentrate fire on enemy ships. Okay. They're uh, probably going to have a little bit of trouble with that because they're like meshed into the enemy fleet, but you have thoroughly stalled their advance uh, with only a few major collisions. I mean, how much damage did we do by ramming the enemy ships? Uh, quite a lot. More than a few were lodged directly into the gas giant. Um, I don't think... Yeah, you got, enough, you got off your lucky rolls and your skill rolls, so you didn't actually lose any to falling into the gas giants well yourself. Um, but they lost maybe three, four, five, six, seven destroyers to the initial rush, uh, and more than a few cruisers that suffered heavy damage but were able to right themselves. You have a couple of your cruisers that are now like lodged into or locked alongside um, Akareth cruisers. They're both la- uh, uh, most of those are lashing at each other with close range lance fire, trying to overwhelm each other's void shields, or worse yet, when they're inside the bubble of each other's void shields, they're just blasting away at each other with impunity. Um, boarding craft zooming all over the place. Aeronautic 
and void craft have been deployed because if nothing else the hangars are, no, uh, are not particularly safe and they need to be in the sky where they can be fighting and knights are boarding uh, both your craft and the Akareth Pre- most predominantly the Akareth but more than a few pissed off knights are attacking your troops albeit not necessarily faring particularly well against uh, the turret defense batteries on board a Voidcraft, which are intended to fight um, Void-capable fighters, which are very big craft. <laughs> I will take... We'll call it b- Command over Ballistics at a plus 20. Well, here we go. That's pass of only one degree, thankfully. You said that's a pass? Yeah, well, I have 50 ballistic skill. I have my plus 10 in command from my skills. I have a talent okay. that gives me plus 10 in command. Okay. And you gave me a plus 20, so yeah, no, I'm rolling at 90. I said minus 20, didn't I? You said minus 20. You said plus 20 to me. What did everyone else hear? I zoned out. I didn't hear. <laughs> yeah, I had plus 20. It's not against possibility. Uh, Creed and Carl, what did you hear? Uh, nothing. Yeah, no, I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else switch the brains off. It's the tactical segment. Uh, okay, well, you know what? I may well have said plus 20. Should we call odds or evens for it, Benji? Does that feel fair? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, odds, no evens. Evens! Plus 20 it is. That's a pass. <laughs> against all odds do manage to begin focusing fire on Akareth vessels, though some of your cruisers are entangled very directly in hideously damaging open conflict at point-blank literally point-blank range with them about two-thirds are not and those two-thirds are relatively fresh they've not been battered by knights they've not been boarded and they've not been running their batteries close to maximum, trying to cause planetary devastation whilst out of range of a volley of orbital guns. Your cruisers are able to, with great difficulty, fly between and even through the sky islands surrounding them, blasting them apart with lance batteries where they have to, and focus fire on just one or two Akareth ships at a time. <laughs> What was your DOS, Benji? Just one. Just one. Okay, give me a D5. And if you get five, it explodes. Ah, three. Two destroyers and a cruiser go down as the Akareth fleet begins to limp. Your own casualties so far have been light. I think I mentioned it was a couple of destroyers. <laughs> yeah, about that. The element of surprise and the surprisingly withstanding training of your troops putting you in fairly good stead. Well, they did get drilled for ages over Ghoul. I'm sure they did. That is true. They were told to expect Void Warfare, not like... This is some EVE Online, all the ships are clipping into each other level bullshit you've got going on here, for the record. Ewan's well, brain is currently running have... at 10% to account well, no, for all the players logging in. We oh, fought these things one before, and the main advantage they had over us was their big gun. What can they not bring to bear at such range? It's very They're true. Big gun. I wonder if they care, though. Uh, if they fired it this close to themselves, they risk being hit by the backlash, and that thing just cut through crew. Like they'll probably survive it, but they probably don't want to fire it that yeah, close. Depending on exactly what it is that powers the gun, Benji's not wrong. Like the amount of power it was putting out, it would have to be some fairly warpy bullshit for it to be fireable, both within atmosphere. And this close without, as he says, the backwash annihilating them. No, fair enough. Then. Fair enough. Which is especially an issue considering that the gun would fire from inside their void shields rather than outside. Yeah, <laughs> they'd just be locked in a big exploding Hell, bubble depend- made. Depending of on how it works, it might not even go off properly, and they might just ignite themselves just from the atmosphere. It's a risk I'm willing to take. It's a risk you already took. You're on board, and on that subject, on board the alien mothership. <laughs> Akareth closing in from all sides all of your squads reporting heavy engagement getting heavier Havoc Company or the majority of members that uh, 
Majority of members? Not, but yeah, the majority of members of Havoc Company. Those those who boarded the Xenos mothership with you, alongside heavy portions of the murder, are being so cut I, off one by one and overwhelmed. Sorry, Ellie? So if I remember rightly, last time I discovered the symbol for the bridge. Yes, sorry, we had reminders for you. Uh, which young Nicholas has now kind of gone and superseded <laughs> slightly. Ah, yes. Uh, Mackie wants to send out a message to Havoc Squads about the bridge symbol. Uh, I think there was another one. Um, maybe there wasn't another one. Sure, there's no biggie. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, can we assume that in my absence, or am I ta- am I slorping back in around the time I left? Yeah, you slorp back in around the time you left. Okay, so in which case, then I send out a general message on the fox saying I found this bridge symbol, and I know that the line's unencrypted, but I don't give a shit. Um, and for us to find the typing. Bridge- Akareth has stopped <laughs> typing. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I will start push- we- I will order my squads to start pushing towards the bridge. Uh, knowing that there are, you know, other, there are Imperial, well, there are, you know, army on with us, can I send out a general broad, broad request to any army staff to help us with the push as well? Those who are not already engaged, potentially, or those who are close or where can see signs? Uh, yeah, you can put out a general, a general sort of APB over the Vox network, including the army frequencies. Um, you know, there weren't actually supposed to be any. You're not sure what's happened, but according to the, their, like, distant and intermittent friend or foe signs, unless it's an Akarath trick, you're looking at what seem to be members of the Solian Salioteers, which in your experience tracks. They do not have the best of luck, and it would make some amount of sense that they may have accidentally deployed to the alien mothership rather than the surface of one of the islands like they were supposed to. <laughs> And so, yeah, it does track. It tracks horribly well. Cool. What do you want me to roll for it? Uh, just command? I will take, I think maybe tech use as you're trying to, like, sort of rapidly patch this together with the machine spirit of your helmet, right? Like, you've got the, you've got the functionality, but the Akareth are able to actively countermeasure you, and you're trying to put out, like, a, a broad beam throughout the ship to the Imperial Army. Mm. Could I use logic instead? <laughs> he said, hopefully. Let's take a look. Oh, is tech use a super specialist skill? Yeah, it's an advanced skill, yeah. Oh, that's fair. It's unfair of me to ask in that case. Um... I mean, I also have I scholastic law, age of technology. Is it age of technology and stuff, maybe? I don't know. Probably more scholastic law mechanicum. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm looking at Koya anyway. That's probably the wrong person. I do not, in fact, have Scholastic Law Mechanica. That's Scholastic Law bullshit. Uh, yeah, basically. Wait, that was an option? <laughs> Man, this guy can talk rings around us. No, but I guess... I mean, if nothing else, in this setting it would be Grok shit. Cows are extinct. Apart from, if I recall correctly, one stasis-locked stake sitting inside a moon somewhere in... Um, Inside that Eldar Maiden world from Rogue Trader. Ah, what's a good one to do instead? Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Let's pace. I will take. I will take logic over intelligence. But I'll give me a minus ten for it. Okay, twenty five or under then. Uh, yeah, I make it. Cheeky pug. Wait, was that bang on? <laughs> no, twenty five or under. Twenty five or under. Twenty <laughs> five. Yeah. Okay, 25 or under. Yeah, you managed to get the signal out, no matter how many weird thirst emojis the Akareth are sending you over your own <laughs> squad box. That's some weird-ass gifts. Well, I'm saving them to my folder anyway. <laughs> it seemed to have an inordinate amount of gifts of dogs for some reason. <laughs> Wonder dog! No, god damn it. God damn it. <clears throat> your own much more pressing concerns. What do Mackie uh, yeah, I'm going to start pushing as hard as I can. Uh, we're all wearing Terminator armor in my squad, or the majority of us are, if I remember rightly. Yes. And we do all have Volkite weaponry that we are trained in and does fit our, our armor. Yes. So I'm going to order everyone to scythe the motherfuckers down, and then I, <laughs> instead of saying, Lord of Chaos, <laughs> Mackie, I'm not going to go that route this time. And I'm just going to say, have a squad. Let's cause some motherfucking chaos. He says as he causes chaos on his desk. You are uh, really continuing to push that Slanesh angle, aren't you? 
just just causing chaos. That's all I'm doing. Causing some <laughs> motherfucking sensuously oh. licking, deeply thirsty chaos. <laughs> and and see, we've got Slash, we've got Corn, we've got some Nurgle, I think, as well in here. I ain't no <laughs> thirsty boy. I ain't it? So, take offense to this. I will take... I will take a ballistic skill check, please, Ollie, and I'm going to give you... Because you're still rocking off the effects of that 100. I'm going to give you a minus 20. Cool. I uh, get a plus 10 because we're doing that standard engagement thingy, right? I... And... I don't know, we've kind of moved on to like your, because your melee weapons especially are generally already best quality, at least the standard ones are. Um, yeah, it's just plus 10 for standard attack, right? I thought well, we were still doing that. I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of... We don't have to. It's fine if you don't I, want I'd to. prefer not to. Okay. Uh, if your weapons have higher than usual quality, that does count. Well, um, I don't know if mine do. No, I think they're heavy weapons, aren't they? So yeah, they might not actually. They're just yeah, it's just a Volkite incinerator. It's just a heavy boy. Um, though it does have proven five and vengeful nine, if they count towards anything. Um, not in this specific circumstance. No worries. In, in which case, then uh, minus twenty, so thirty-five or under. Uh, Don't get one. I'm going to spend a fake point. Ando, ando. That's no ando. Uh, right, so was it minus 20 you said? Yeah. So 35 or under, so 4 degrees of fate. I don't know. Uh, 35, 45, 55, 55. Uh, what did I get there? 3 degrees of failure, I think? So 45 or under, right? Th oh, 35 or under. Oh, 35, you got, so it'll be 45, 55, 65. Yeah, you're too shy of 4 degrees of failure. Yummy get. Yeah, that knocks you down a little bit. Alright, it'll take a D4 for your fatalities. I mean, that was going to happen. Oh, Christ, yeah. Despite the fact that uh, you and all ten of your squad mates are wearing Terminator armor, despite your heavy armament... And the shielding. And the shielding. <laughs> on the way to the bridge, no less than four of your brothers are cut down. The Akareth seem to swarm you from every angle. Traps. Squads. Their cunning seems limitless. One brother is taken out by a melter bomb hidden beneath a loose pressure plate. Another gunned down by a wave of Akareth suicide charging, each bearing uh, poorly maintained plasma weaponry. One more simply dragged down as he breaches through a wall into a room turn that turns out to be filled with Akareth. And there is a slow and subtle rage that is building inside of Mackie's mind right now as each brother is taken down. The, uh, the weapon gets hotter, and he keeps firing faster and faster. You long ago lost track of how many Akareth you'd flensed, flayed into nothingness atom by atom with great conflagrating bolts of your Volkite heavy weapon. Or bursts. Streams. <coughs> A little voice at the back of your mind. Kill. Maim. Skin. Skins for the skin, God. <laughs> skin, skin, skin. No, I'm, I'm not quite there yet. I'm not, I'm not quite skins for the skin, yeah, God. Yeah, it's a cold skin, fury. Skin. You're not there chanting or raging or screaming. Exactly. But a tiny part of you is so incredibly angry with these Xenos scum. You remember each of your brothers as they go down. You can't see their faces... But you can see the anime eyes on their helmets, twisted in fear or horror or sickening mirth. The final brother that you lose before you get to the bridge is taken down when you enter a massive conveyor way, forced to fight up this colossal hallway towards the bridge, going through barricade after barricade, taking on Akareth skimmers. Past a certain point, you hear a low keening noise in the distance and Akareth on what appeared to be nothing so much as colossal almost plows technological robotic sleds about as wide as they are and about as long as they are tall carry them at near lightning speed down the conveyor way and directly towards you guns flashing 
Though any time your uh, Volkite weaponry from you and your Terminators gets any kind of hit on these things, it annihilates the Akareth and their sledding craft, most manage to skid past you. And with concentrated fire, they're eventually able to overwhelm the shielding on one of your Terminators and then pick them apart, bit by bit. They're fielding more and more what seem to be more exotic weaponry, plasma and bolt equivalent. But at long last, you and your remaining six Terminators force your way into what you look, uh, what you think is the outer echelons of the bridge complex. So far, none of your squads have linked up with you, and two of them, their friend or foe markers, have simply stopped moving on your HUD. Uh, I'm going to hold up here whilst I wait for the friend or foe markers, so for the remaining squads to link up. They're moving towards you, but going at a snail's pace. Intermittent Vox traffic is coming in. Casual. I'm hoping it's... Jeez. Alien. No. I'm hoping as the squads link up together, they become stronger and less uh, less able for the uh, a Xenos scum to take them out. It's been a long and bitter march up here. You hunker down, forming a defensive uh, defensive line with the rest of your men, hoping to hold off the Akareth, and that they can't bring too many troops down or up the conveyor way in order to cut you off from your reinforcements, if indeed those reinforcements are coming. Young Nicholas. Yes. Schmung Schmickelis. Schmung Schmickelis. Um What are we doing? Uh, I'd like to put, uh, if possible, um, markers for my brothers in arms. Uh, uh, the other... The focus points basically for the warp stuff rather than the goo. Uh, say, uh, focus these points of interest, uh, mm. obliterate, and I just go for the closest one sort of thing. Now, focus these points of interest doesn't really register with most of the surviving members of the murder, but the uh, word obliterate uh, does. Uh, can I not ping the positions like you said I could? You or? can ping the position. Well, I don't think I said you do. You can ping the like, right, approximate yeah. Uh, positions. Yeah. It's, do you remember that there's like the knowledge is in your head? Uh, yeah. Whereas like whatever map you have of the craft, it doesn't automatically transfer to uh, whatever your HUD has built. And what your HUD yeah. will build will be like, insofar as it has a model of the inside of the craft, that'll be like yeah. the terrain that you've gone through so far. So you, could, you can still make approximate pings though. Yeah, approximate uh, ping. Obliterate this area. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will take. I think a command test over fellowship, please. At a, it's a difficult command, but also you've led the murder pretty well so far, and they do. And I did say well. obliterate. So I will give you a plus zero. A plus zero, nice. <laughs> command over what, sorry? Fellowship. Fellowship. Why is it fellowship? <laughs> that sad face. <laughs> I could really up my command, to be fair. Um, it would be hilarious. Oh, if you can I you? Can I? I can go off of. Um, I guess it's commanding, isn't it? Really, so yeah, you can't really do this off strength. No, I was thinking war, common or scholastic war. No, yeah, this is this no, is definitely yeah, fellowship. I'm afraid commanding. Mate. Yeah. Um, if you were mind controlling them, you could maybe argue willpower. Yeah. No. Uh, um. Uh, yeah. It's, uh yeah, fair enough. Just think, are there any skills I could use instead? I think you're you're uh, stuck on. Cast me at straws. Like. Yeah, come on, yeah. come on, have a fellowship, please, mate. Yeah, mm, Kikoki. I believe in you. You've got fate, right? This will work. Ah! Yes, one degree of success. Did that actually work? Yes. What what is real it with you? For a he got a one. The last two <laughs> sessions, all of your plans have come to fruition. <laughs> This is not the young Nicholas I've spent, like, five years playing with. The Emperor is on my side! Or someone else's. Yes. Either way! The Emperor is indeed on your side, obviously. Naturally, that is who is on your side. <laughs> if you feel like the taste of blood or the need for more skins at any point, Nick, you let us know, okay? Skins? Oh, here we've lost him already. <laughs> he was lost long ago. <laughs> he really was. Did we ever truly have him? No, I think not. 
<laughs> the so. first time I grew wings out of my chest, that's when you lost me truly. Out of your chest? Well, you never grew. No, no, uh, I-, I grew that out of my chest, remember? When Nuzwell turned and got possessed, mm. literally he, like, bent over backwards sort of thing. Oh, uh, yeah. It was real graphic. I, I improvise a lot of my demonic possessions, so I'm going to be real with you. I don't really remember how I described it, I'm afraid. Oh, I, I do. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad. That, that makes me feel very happy. Demon face was on the back of my head, like, hands turned other way. It was a whole thing. So. You've become somewhat adept at bending the murder to your will. An <laughs> alarmingly useful skill these days. And with strategic commands of obliterate, even though it takes a few repeated ones, as well as your own ability to get uh, some of the more remote clusters, you're able to detonate, or at least destroy, the individual rooms and the goop within, as instructed by the knowledge encoded into your uh, empyrean self. I feel like teaching the word obliterate to Nick and then telling him about obliterators. So like, so Fortunately, weird. they don't exist yet. And, and they never. I'll pace myself. I'm sorry. After the last chamber is destroyed, by your own hand, no less, or more specifically your own chain fist, for a moment an unholy calm seems to settle over the ship. And then everything grows darker, darker and rustier. From your position up near the bridge, Mackie, you notice not a rhyme of hoarfrost as you're perhaps used to with occasional warp travel, but a rhyme of rust begin to spread out from the bulkhead to either side of your current gun position. The ship all around you seems to destabilize. You hear creaks and groans as it starts to snap apart in places. Oh, shit. <laughs> Nick? Uh, Sorry! Fuck, did you do this? I did it again! <laughs> Captain Damn it, Nick, I wanted that! <laughs> Captain I'm Yetson. sorry! The first you hear of the ship beginning to uh, crack is the honeycomb structure next to you collapsing on the two Solian Salioteers within. Oh. Nick. Killing them instantly. <laughs> Nick. There will be only one. <laughs> Nazim. I think I'm a spaceship with my sword. Nick. Nazim. <laughs> We're in the spaceship. <laughs> no. Nazim, how keen were you on the big gun? I like the idea of the big gun quite a bit, to be fair. Had it been, it'd be mentioned to you, right? Uh, I feel it would be mentioned in briefing and so forth, yes. Nick may have um, missed it, but Nazim definitely would not have. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that's fair. I don't remember it specifically being so, but to be fair, also Koya did bring, try to bring up with like his legal people, and usually he goes to consult with you on matters legal anyway, so you may well have been involved in pre-council. The knowledge stuck in your head pulses. And you feel a, a strange tugging, a compelling urge to set explosives near what you take to be the, the moorings, the core power structures for the uh, colossal gun. It's not a forceful, compelling urge. Mm. But a single word resonates through your head. Or a single phrase, rather. A favour for a favour. What do Nazim? I try to process if he's done me a favour by giving me this information, and now I'm doing him a favour by destroying the big gun. No, I think you're letting the big gun go, and he's giving it to you as a favour. And it's probably going to be the only thing that survives. Yeah, if I recall correctly, like the initial favour was you setting him free by destroying the ship, if that is really what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I, it feels like the ship is literally falling apart right now, right? Oh, no, it, it certainly is. feels like it's snapping apart 
Uh, and we've got, we've got a, a thingy ear, don't we? So we kind of least, can tell that it's like, this least, isn't right. When you're in a high high intensity, close range void ship battle, the last thing you want is rust on your ship. Yeah. Suddenly spreading out across all areas. <laughs> like a little bit of rust you can deal with when you can see the rust on your ship spreading like stress fractures, like fire through a wheat field. That is rust you do not want. Yeah. Um, I'm going to instruct the murder to follow me for more skins. What about the rest of the people on the fucking ship, Nick? It's a good question. Uh, what does the, imper- else. Like, what will like, the Imperial like, Army be doing here? The, the, the Solitaires, er- everyone. And like, follow me for more skins. Uh, <laughs> and, and? Um, uh, but also, I'll instruct the Solitaires. Uh, the solitaire, Solitaires? Solitaires. Salutaires. Um They may want to start moving off of the ship. Anyone that isn't void environmentally sealed, you may want to leave. Oh Nick, dear. Nick, 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 you're forgetting. We may be void engineered, but we're not anti-gravity. And we're currently in the gravity world of a big fuck off. <laughs> Nick. Just jump hard enough, right? Jump hard, we're, yeah. We're going I'm, to I'm going to... I'm going to retreat back to those docking bays we came in and see if any yeah. ships are good for evac repurposing. Yeah. While well, on the that. outside, there's big guns shooting everything. Good <laughs> luck getting a ship. To be strictly fair, the main drive is currently still operational. So you're not immediately falling yet. And the mm-hmm. two of you who have been in a void craft falling into a gravity well filled with noxious crushing gases previously... <laughs> not a sentence I ever thought I'd have to utter, uh, would be extremely familiar with the sensation. Should we add this to... If we had a nickel for every time this happened, we'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird it's happened more than one. (laughs) This side of the Atlantic, you'd have ten pence. Two nickels. Uh, I'm going to message Havoc Squad. It's like, I require explosives, please. (laughs) Uh, Okay, sure. Yeah, my squad doesn't know what the fuck's going on apart from shit's collapsing. Uh, Fine. Follow me. Um, I, I will also <laughs> try to get a message. Um... No, actually, yeah, no, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because I'm, 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 I'm so, going to the bridge. <laughs> oh, yeah. you are actually. Aren't you? So yeah, realistically, you would message the like army guys and that dude that has just run to you with a box of grenades and then run back with the box of grenades. <laughs> it's going to have to make a third trip. Um, our grenades going to be a explosive enough, enough, and enough of them. To do the explosions I need to remove this gun. You'd need a lot of grenades, or chain fists, or heavy weaponry, or ingenuity, and you need it fast. You I need the murder, basically. That I, does not have ingenuity. I'm sorry. Hmm? What was that? <laughs> the murder, I don't know, they, the found, they, they have ingenuity within their sphere. They found a way to skin mushroom people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although it's, I suppose credit where it's due, actually, that was young Nicholas came up with that. Uh, it was an or, right? It was lots of chain fists or ingenuity. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's that many terminators in the murder, but yeah, I, I order the uh, the terminators directly to follow me for the optimum skinning and skin uh, a ship. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't like the, the message will be: you want to skin a ship. No, I think we've said to Benji previously that they don't want to skin a ship. Is the thing that's not that's not satisfying. Oh, oh I see. I see. Okay. Well, in fact, me you for... directly used that argument with Benji. It would be very mean of me to not call you on it <laughs> when when you've you've made that point against him. Have I? You have as that's an argument for why the murder should follow you in doing what you wanted to do instead of what he told them to do. I see. Well, either way. Follow me for even more skinning. Um, yeah, so you're just going to lie to them, right? It, 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 no, I'm not going to lie. On the way, we have more skinning to do. Lie of omission. Okay. Uh, I will um, take. Sorry, what were you going to say, Ollie? Uh, so I'm just going to head to the bridge, I suppose, because. You're just going to bust in, yeah? Uh, I, I, mean, I, I will let. As I'm not having a havoc source come with me, sorry. I, I will let them know that it, it seems the ship may be falling apart. All passengers might be. <laughs> we'll need to be aware of the fact that you may even encounter some unexpected turbulence. Yes. Please do not I'll... panic, but make your way to the available exit. Okay. Yes, for a protect. I- if possible, also via the, the correct channels, I try to get a message to um, Brother Captain as well to let him know the mothership may be about to fall <laughs> apart. I'm going to try to liberate the uh, the gun. 
Ollie, what was it we made you roll to get your Vox going earlier? Logic. Logic over intelligence, was intelligence, it? At a minus 10, yeah. right? Okay, cool. I'll take the same from yourself, please, John Nicholas, for your various APBs to everyone who isn't the murder who are quite close to you. Okay, then. Well, and the, the Imperial Army. Was that a minus 10, was it? Yeah. Fuck, that's a fail. I want to fail. Yeah, no, you can't seem to reach Mackie on the bridge. Like, your friend or foe uh, stuff is spotty, but you're pretty sure he's not. Oh, you've got actually immaculate sensing of where everyone is. Yeah, no, you, you know that he and the survivors of his Havoc Squad are up on the bridge, but, like, you can't reach them on the Vox. You're detecting two more uh, squads from Havoc Company that have just been utterly wiped out. Their corpses are rapidly rotting. Um single survivor from one is currently being not eaten by the Akareth, but like they're they're trying to get into his armor after he's been disabled but without killing him you can't tell what they're up to but they're looking to do something uh, and then the remainder of havoc squads um have a company squads on board i think there's two or three others um they've taken heavy casualties most of them are operating at just under or just over half strength, um, and almost all of them are bogged down. Cool. I will take command of a fellowship for your instructions to the murder, please. Fellowship. Uh, any bonuses, as I've been leaning them so well so far? I don't... Hmm. I suppose it's you're just doing the wild charge at first right now, right? Uh, it's been a wild charge, and it's slowly being, becoming more and more focused, but they are getting the skinning done that they love. That's true. I'll give you a plus ten, because it's you're you're going to have to go a bit of a ways now. You're trekking up to the top side of the ship where the gun is. Cool. Uh, it's a fellowship, yeah? Yeah. <sighs> oh, no. That's not happening. 89. The murder is unleashed and all but scattered to the winds. A single Terminator snaps off a crisp salute as they report to you. Who will have to do? You note that they are drenched, more or less head to toe, in almost entirely Akareth tissue. What you've been calling skin. As well as one decidedly human skin that may or may not be from the Solian Salyateers. I'm deducting another one from you, Creed. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Uh, let's go. Um, do I know of any explosives en route to the to the big gun? Do you have immaculate knowledge of the ship? I um, do. You... The Akareth have mostly mobilized. Um, there's not any major armories en route, but there is a decently sized uh, group of Akareth who you could stop, attack, and attempt to take the weapons from. Would be a bit of a risk yeah. if they might use them on you. That's Let's fine. speedily see what happens to the Salyateers before the end of session, though, shall we? Cool. Salient Salyateers, you wanted to try and bug out to the hangar bay and then get back on board the... Uh, uh, what's it called? The Obsidian Heart. Might be a bit difficult, you know, they're in high orbit, as far as you're aware, so <laughs> that's going to be a bit of a transit, but, you know, you'll cross that bridge when you burn it. Mm. I think fighting your way back through the determined Akareth defense is probably looking at a weapon skill at minus 20, please. Cool. Please, wait. Yeah, I'll do. The five failures. Five failures. Let's get a D50 for those casualties. Come on, my boys. 50, 50, 50. 30. Not great. Not bad. All things considered. Mm. I mean, out to be 37 members of your company left at this point. Oh, need less aircraft to bug out now. It's extremely <laughs> true. As you force your way through Akareth position after Akareth position, again... Uh, it'd be 47, right? Really? 67, 57, 47. Yeah, it will be 47. Sorry. I can do mathematics. Um, <clears throat> yes, forcing your way through prepared Akareth position after prepared Akareth position. Three entire squads cut down along the way by either booby traps or else simply by enfilading fire. The Akareth keep up the pressure the entire way. There's no point where you have a breakthrough and feel clear, and more than once your squads straggle behind, and you're forced to go back, fight them clear, and then push on. You reach the hangar bay and the boarding torpedoes. 
with fairly little time to spare. Let's just do a double check, because I don't remember. Ollie, I remember at the end of, uh, when you came in last session, you expressed something about wanting to smash up the planes in the hangar bay you came into. Yes, that's when I thought I had the gravity weapons, but I didn't. Yeah, okay, so you didn't actually do it. No, I didn't do it. Okay, fair. (laughs) Cool. In that case, fortunately enough for you, there are still some human-ish looking aeronautic craft available. But as you stare out through the the gaps in the hull, you can see something truly horrifying outside. Yefsen. Either the aliens have ascended or the human fleet has descended, because the Obsidian Heart is almost directly opposite this ship, like in visual range. Huh. In fact, you, you almost fancy... You know this is obviously not true, but you almost fancy as you squint at the familiar prow in the distance, and behind that the the distant speck of the bridge that you can see the distant shining glimmer of the chief apothecary's teacup. Hmm. I'll uh, pull up my little box kit and try and message the ship with the curious uh, permission to board? Nothing but static. In fact, you can barely even hear people on the box near enough to you. Uh, it looks like there is a full, and in fact, you can see the flashes of bright light all but blinding you. Hear the explosions from outside. Um, there is a full on. Th- th- this is, in Voidcraft terms, the equivalent of locking like 30 weasels in a bag and all of the weasels have <laughs> knives and just letting them like team deathmatch it out. The friendly well- fire is real. But also, the mass destruction is pretty fucking real. In that case, depending on how many boys I have, I'll send, um, well, how many pilots I have. I'll send most of them away with orders to just try and get to high orbit and await for a safe boarding. And I'll stay behind with myself and one or two pilots. See if we can pick up anyone else who wants EVEC. I've still got a fair few. There's still a fair few destroyers in high orbit, I will say that. Yeah, there's, there's lots and lots, in fact. In fact, the majority. Okay, that's that's a good point. Let's let's just speedily final roll of the session. Odds or evens me on whether you've got enough pilots left over. Evens. Odds. No odds. You always got to get the opposite. Oh, yeah, it's, it. it's it's worked for Benji like twice so far this session. Yep. Maybe three times. Um, yeah. It's okay though. Your bad luck recharges the luck roll. There must be yin to the yang, or what? Well, there must be yang to the yin. Okay. Can I pilot? Does it say so on your sheet? Uh, good point. Uh, don't think so. Apparently not. Then, sadly. All right. It would seem that there's only enough pilots and craft available to get forty or so of your men away. Seven are going to have to remain behind. Mm. Um, I'll stay behind with the seven by a ship and watch out. <laughs> to ask if any marines happen to be evac with pilot skills. <laughs> okay, in that case, actual final roll of the session. I will give you the chance to do the, the Vox test because the background radiation is fucking the entire Vox network. Uh, that'll be logic over int to the minus 10, please. Arguably it should be more because you have a machine spirit helping you, but let's be nice. Uh, it's logic basic. I think logic's basic. Um, guard don't have basic skills. Oh, uh, army rather. That's a marine right. thing. Then it'll be minus thirty net, right? Minus yep, twenty yep. from. Oh, I've one last fate left. Do it for the chance. Oh, close. <laughs> what were you off? I was looking. Uh, oh, further than I thought. Actually, I was looking for a five. <laughs> thought I was looking for 14, a ten. Fourteen, <laughs> so close. No, though, that's only a degree of failure. That's not two. You can make out a friend or foe marker for two friend or foe markers, in fact, on your map. On your map, on your uh, what passes for your heads-up display. One moving extremely rapidly towards the top of the ship, and one somewhat nearer, but which is mostly stationary. Which do you want to move towards? Uh, go to the nearer one. It's fair. It's sensible. 
That feels like a good place to leave it. Straight up, I'm going to court martial the shit out of you, Nick. What? Why? You know, I'm not even going to dignify that with an answer. What? It is what? extremely I, 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 sad when he's completely legally not culpable, right? Okay, so. <laughs> reminders for next session. Um, God boy headed towards close split. Uh, requisition Astropath from, uh, <laughs> wherever the fuck it is, uh, Crevasse, no, 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 I was going to the wrong one, Gazva, yeah. Uh, where, where is, um, my, my Havoc squad right now? What, what are my Havoc squads doing actually right now? Uh, you've got, I think, five Havoc squads in the field plus your own, um. Wait, only five? Is that all that survived? No, you took five into the field plus your own, so there's six total, uh, Two oh, squads, right? squads, yeah. Um, two are uh, just down; they're wiped, as far as you can tell. Um, though your Nicholas knows that at least one of those actually has a survivor, but the survivor's basically been taken prisoner, um, and their life expectancy doesn't look great anyway. Uh, or well, Nazim knows rather. Uh, and then the remaining three are still moving, but they've taken extremely heavy casualties. They're either just over or just after about half. Um, half marines still able to move um, so about similar to your squad uh, mm-hmm. but they're also like heavily bogged down um, you you basically as you may recall from last session uh, or indeed the recording you got slightly screwed over by that hundo uh, and drew a load of the flak that should have been going to um, squad. Yeah. to the murder yeah exactly well plus because like they could read your comms and knew that you were pushing with a lot of heavy weapon specialists to the bridge, which was mm. a very obvious priority target, and knew that you knew where you were going and where all your guys were, so they made more of a priority of you. Whereas, mm. like, what are the chances of them being able to affect the extremely specific destruction of chambers required to do anything in the other room that the other guy was pushing towards and that they had no reason to believe would be an issue? Mm. Okay. Uh, can I get that as a reminder for the casualties? Uh, two squads lost from... yeah. And uh, I'm trying to remember, like, I don't think we actually decided if we we're still pushing to the bridge. Nick did tell us that the shit was breaking apart, though, I think. It tried, but didn't get through. Yeah. Oh, so I don't know in the slightest that, and that anything's wrong apart from the rust spreading everywhere. You can see that there's some, like, major structural integrity problems, and you can feel the ship starting, the, the superstructure starting to shake and shudder, but also it's in the middle of an active void battle, and that's not actually that unusual. So, yeah, may, arguably you don't really know particularly well. You might be able to intuit something, but even, to be fair, Nazim doesn't know this. He's just making assumptions based on his, like, psychic knowledge of the ship. Mm. Cool. Okay, I need a reminder then that I don't know I'm about to die. Thanks, Nick. I tried, sorry! The fact of the matter is that you tried to tell me after the fact, the fact it happened at all. I I was going to disabling that. warp drives, not destroy the ship. I, for one, appreciate that it's very, very easy to lead young Nicholas to do things. It makes many things much easier. <laughs> Imagine if some named guard are the only survivors in a turn of events. Unnamed guard. <laughs> Koya uh-huh. summarily promotes them to official marine rank. <laughs> Get you some core fair on upgrades. Oh. It, 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 it. Nick, you gotta stop listening to the spoopy voices inside your head. They never mean well. Don't listen hey. to them. We uh, are the uh, only maybe. ones. I agreed that, yes, we need to destroy the ship, so fine, tell me how to destroy the ship. That wasn't the orders. I, I will wasn't say that the wasn't, orders. Wasn't well, the no, orders no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, it was, <laughs> I want to destroy the warpy stuff to stop us warping away. <laughs> well, it was my plan. And then it was saying, destroy these things in the warpy area. I was like, oh, okay, fair enough, I'll destroy those. I think it's beautifully in character that you gave the spooky snot face dripping off the wall the benefit of the doubt because it said, I used to be human, question mark. <laughs> 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 and then just immediately did its bidding. Tiny <laughs> bit of warpy knowledge, no one will teach exactly. me. Yes, please. Yeah, exactly. And it, it made perfect sense in character. It's just you being a little bit too trusting. And, and but, that but is also a valid it, move. 
in, in character, I was also thinking that, like, it wants you to destroy these specific cells inside the area that is warpy. I'm like, okay, that seems like it would probably stop it from warping away. I'll do that. So, I was honestly expecting you to go and find the bridge to stop it warping away by taking the bridge and stopping them from operating the ship. Ah. Well, you know what they say about expectations, don't they? <laughs> they make yeah. an incursion out of you and me. Um, any other reminders was... for next session? Uh, I have a mind map of the ship. That's true. Uh, hey, God, I hope that is now. Uh, also, the, the, the ship is falling apart. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I That's remember that one. Uh, yeah, when you did that, uh, the subtitles appeared over my head. Oliver will remember this. Don't worry, <laughs> I got you, bro. Don't even know. Any other reminders for next session? Um, uh, yeah. Um, Medicaid situation on the Obsidian Heart is uh, overloaded. I mean, we're in a pitch battle. That's kind of to be expected. <laughs> This, I, I think this actually technically ranks above a pitched battle. A pitched battle is when you get a couple of broadsides in. Uh, the, the aforementioned weasels simile is, is not disaccurate. Um, and I would also like a reminder to get like those child safety foam toppers for like decorative spikes. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to have those taken out. Replace the spikes with more skulls. We were I mean, chaos, like, oh, chaos was cool, you know. <laughs> uh, what? Any any other reminders? <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like saying it. Oh, it feels natural. Uh, sorry. Any other reminders? Wait, Lynn, where are you taking me? <laughs> <laughs> no other reminders. Um, do we need one for um, anything? You I, I'm going to rob like some that. some guys for explosives. Uh, I don't think you've even noted down where you're going. So I hope you remember by next week. Uh, okay, so we have that. I'm, I'm going for the big gun, getting explosives on the way. Main aim of the rest of the fleet is to disable the outer craft of the Akareth. Just a second. Because re remember, we still want to know where their homeworld is, so we want the information from the databanks of the uh, big ship. And the big gun, but, you know. How big is the big gun? Are we talking like... It, it one shot a cruiser. It's a big gun. It runs is it most like the length. Building sized it or is it like town most, sized? It runs most the length of the ship, which is about the oh. size, if not slightly larger, than a mass conveyor. And also like it's my forty K and I usually run ships as larger than the standard size. So you're looking at a gun that's in excess of, of twenty kilometers. Okay. Usually, on Imperial vessels, guns this long, you would build them into the spine of the vessel as opposed to on a sort of arm mounting like this one is. Yeah, no, that's a situation of instead of adding a gun to a ship, you just put engines on a gun. That, that's generally how Nova cannons function. But if nothing else, this gun is articulated despite its colossal size. To be fair, there is actually a plane based around that design principle. Yeah. Yeah, fair. It was a train as well. Train guns, memes. Um, yeah. Sorry, disable the Xenos fleet, was it, Benji? Yeah, we want to try and disable as many of the enemy ships as we can. Cool, cool. Uh, any other reminders for next session? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. Fair, fair. Okay, in that case, feedback. Anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you like to see more of or less of next time. Oh, cool. Uh, I, I will note a bit of feedback. Uh, I think it was absolutely lovely that I gave Benji a choice of A or B in like, oh, where do you want to place your casualties? Who do you want to piss off? And he picked option C and dive slammed the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in no way prepared for that. I thought he was going to keep being you know, full-on professional Twelves moustache Benji. Uh, we broke him, finally. I, I, <laughs> Remember, we, we're we not supposed to lose the world. It's true, you know. If we let them take the capital and start killing everyone, we're going to lose the world functionally. <laughs> uh, I mean, to protect it's, the civilians of the Imperium, we must descend. It's extremely true. Um, 
so so yeah, fair. Like credit credit where it's due. That um that was both awesome and took me by surprise. And like I know they're dumb, but I've always had a bit of a weakness for like Star Wars style space battles where everyone's within literal visual range of each other for no good reason. Mm. Uh, and it's immensely fun to get to do that in 40k, especially in an atmosphere. You just want to reenact islands. the bit from the Rise of Sky Rise of Skywalker with the fucking cavalry charge. Oh One my day we God. will do it. It was like the only good thing in that movie was that fucking like, ah, this is how Rough Riders operate. <laughs> cavalry charge the enemy cruiser. <laughs> yeah, if you had cavalry, I absolutely would have found a way to get them in there. Um, there were plans for lizard cavalry at one point, I think someone mentioned, but I don't think we got around to it. Uh, any other feedback? Uh, I think... No, I think I'm okay. Fair, fair. <laughs> Question. That's, the gods. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I should have offered you last session as well, really, but I didn't think. Um, psychic shenanigans always fun. Yeah. Well, I like doing psychic shenanigans, so I, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to like marry the gameplay mm-hmm. styles of we want the professional stuff, but we also want the stupid hijinksy stuff and seesawing too much one way or the other is is clearly not fun for everyone so trying to find that balance in the middle where it's like professional but also still kind of kexy um is is uh what i'm trying to work towards a bit more now and i also definitely appreciate uh people coming with me on that like i i feel like it's been definitely notable from my point of view that the people who like are very okay with the professional gameplay have still been making an effort to be more hijinxy as well um I think that makes everything a lot better from all sides. Cool. Uh, questions? Anything anyone was narratively unsure of in that session? Is everyone following the plot? Yeah. Are, are the faces <laughs> Nurgle or Corn? That's plot details, mate. It might not be either. <laughs> Benji's still got an outside bet on in, like, Alien War Machine from Old Night, which I suppose isn't mutually exclusive. Technically, neither is Nurgle or Corn. You can Nurgle and Corn. Yeah, you can be undivided. Norn or Kurgle? Well, even even if you're not undivided, you can you can worship Nurgle and Corn without worshiping the other two gods. Yeah. Well, to be fair, it, it's unlikely to be Slanesh because he's quite a new god. Uh, yes, but also Slanesh <laughs> exists backwards in time from its birth. Yes, we, to we some know. Degree. War piece, boopy bullshit. Yeah. Um. So it could be anything. It could be a minor demon. It could not be Warpy at all. Well, I suppose we know it's Warpy that actually Senescience was getting flung around. Um, but it could be non-demony things. Maybe you are just dealing with an alien species. It's just a weapon from Old Knight that got left out of its box. Would not be the first piece of Archaeotech to get corrupted. By any stretch of the imagination, actually. No. <laughs> that was a really dumb statement. <laughs> um... Any other questions? I don't think so. Fair, fair. Um, cool. Let's do some XP. Yes. Oh, no, I clicked exit on the notepad. Uh, oh, wait, no, these are highlights. What am I doing? Cool. Plot progression. Does anyone feel like you made any significant plot progression this session? And if so, what? Blew up the ship. Almost. I haven't done it yet. Young wow. Nicholas did a young Nicholas. Like, guys, guys, we didn't start it off with yes. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm honestly so happy. I wasn't going to mention it. I, I knew it was probably well, going to happen. There are two other segments. It's fine. Say again, sorry? What was that? Well, you can't say yes when I did the clarification already anyway. Like, it doesn't make sense, then. Are you talking to me? No, not, not you, Nicholas. Yeah. You're fine, Ollie. Young Nicholas did something, a.k.a. Young Nick gonna Young Nick. Uh, any other plot progression? Um, the battle continues. We've got skins. I don't know if that's plot progression. You might argue character development. But even then, you didn't really get many skins this uh, this session. Yeah. Um, I, I think. I mean, honestly, I, the, I, I found a psychic being. 
Is that plot progression? I thought that's plot progression. I feel like the Legion has gone all the Legion has gone all in on this battle. We win or we die. I think that's covered by the battle intensifying, but fair enough. I'm I'm almost tempted after this to like I kind of want to give you all a specialization in um like gas giant fighting or sky fighting, but I feel like it would also cheapen the experience of the repeated sky fighting if you just had a plus ten to fighting in floating over big crushy depth. Uh, I think it's about plus five then. What? No, nothing big. I'd, uh, no, I'd take well, just the piloting skill. We're, we're notably like someone sets not, up the training yeah. course on the ship. We're notably <laughs> not taking negatives to it because of our Lyman's ear anyway. So That's true. You it's know not like we, if we were fighting, say we were somehow, for some strange reason, fighting other space marines on a gas giant. <gasps> they might be more affected. But that would never happen. I, I think I think Creed's thing is probably a very. I mean, that's also a valid point. But I think Creed's thing is probably a valid point. Yeah, we'll say that rather than being a general skill, pilot is trainable by everyone. That's gonna, how we're going to represent this because it's clear that it's needed. There's no guarantee that the pilots will be alive to get the exit cra- uh, the craft back out again after you board anything. Um, yes. So it's no longer capped to rank three. Character development. Does anyone feel like they develop their characters this session? And if so, how? Yes. Young Nicholas goes all in. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, um... I, I, didn't I sat talking yes, to spoopy faces sure making greens. Not accepting yeah. Actually, thinking about it, the crew goes all in. Everybody's going all in on this one. <laughs> With the possible exception of Carl. <laughs> Hey, I, I don't know. He stuff. was he was doing health and no, safety no, you review did do on stuff, the bridge, but it like Ollie went do or die for his push on the bridge. I went do or die of die bomb the enemy fleet. Young Nicholas did young Nicholas things and went all in on the let's quickly make a pact with an eldritch being. I say so. We did do or die. He, Nick did do and die. <laughs> and then I realised the reality of trying to stop people from dying. I I will be fairly uh, like to be fair to young Nicholas. Just making a deal with a demon is not quite the same as making a pact. It's not less dumb, but it's not quite the same thing. Hmm. It's it's the difference between having an understanding with someone and having a full legal contract. One is an order of magnitude more official, and taints your soul. I didn't say possess me. I said you scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. Yeah, and that's what you did. Clearly, this is a good working relationship. Exactly, healthy. Healthy. Until you get stabbed in the back. Exactly. That'll be fine. Any other character development? Uh, um, did you get down uh, the. I... Sorry. Oh, I was just going to say I revert back to my previous sentiment of realizing the futility of trying to stop people from dying. That's really bad in a medical professional. <laughs> Did you really express that this session? I feel like you spent most, like, the time you were active, you spent trying to stop people from dying. Yeah, and it really did not go well. <laughs> it's true. Who put all these spikes here? <laughs> what are the workplace health and safety guidelines? Who thought this was a good idea? This is a workplace, like- damn it. Ultimately, yeah, that was pretty much like the grumbling that was going on. Yeah. <sighs> um, communicating with another psychic being. I, I, I think that's character development for Nazim. Yeah, I would say that's valid for Nazim. Cool, cool. Excellence of roleplay. Does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well? And if so, how? In two words. Begrudgingly, I do think that Nick did roleplay very well. <laughs> but you can taste the ash on his tongue there. <laughs> How did he roleplay well, Ollie? Has has he frozen? Yeah. Has his rage frozen? I use my psychic powers on him. <laughs> God damn it! Not again! With this, like, this this is what his face looks like on my on my screen as well. It's He's just dropped for me. Frozen in pure fear. Yeah. I, I just failed to snip it before it changed. I, I'm, I'm so glad I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oh, for an Ollie discomfort mo- uh, emoji. 
Does anyone else want to compliment your Nicholas on his roleplay and how? Um, the whole interaction with Demon Face, like, stab it, stab it. Ooh, what? You're going to help me? Yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just like me, are you? Oh, that's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> I see oh, no even gonna question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything else? Um, I thought Benji's um, whole sequence of events starting out with uh, intimidating the ever-living crap out of the majority of the night and then getting tired of being called a coward and then just going into melee range with ships. <laughs> Sorry, this is why I want jump pack like, knights. Going into melee range have, with ships. If you have the jump pack knights at melee range, they'll be able to easily jump up on the ships uh. and rip them to pieces. Hopefully Which is big ass chain fist that we've equipped them with. See, if we had those things, it would be viable. But I would say that this was probably the biggest non-professional thing that uh, yeah, there, there, are reason, there are reasons for doing it. <laughs> it's true. It's non-professional or unprofessional within professional okay. guidelines. Random within certain parameters, if you will. Hey, let emotions get the better of him. I didn't just do it because of that. I did do it for tactical reasons, but equally, it does shut those cunts up. Does shut those cunts up. <laughs> oh, you're a coward, wanker. Belly flop the planet. Uh, Ollie, did you want to uh, compliment your Nicholas's roleplay stuff there? Because you just, like, you cut out at the exact moment you were going to do it, and your face on webcam froze into a sneer of discomfort. <laughs> It was beautiful. Uh, it was like, yeah, it, it was like, you know, the interactions were one what I expect of Nick and two what I expect of his character. So I think it was role played pretty well. That's, that's fair. That's beautiful. Thank you. We did actually already get Carl to fill it out for you. So he didn't technically need the compliment, but I did want to no. hear you say it. No worries. Uh, any other excellence of role play awards from anyone? I think, um, um, Though, I think I was going to say Craig did a good job as a, a guard, or oh, sorry, army officer. Yeah, I, I was, I was like, but I, I need the which bit. I was just trying to pick one. <laughs> yeah, I think Craig did well as an army officer, especially as his little uh, imperial fist <laughs> cosplay kicked in. Mm. Quickly, I, we will fortify this position. I like the Sally of Tears. Two things they've adapted to work with. Utter berserkers carving a beachhead and incredibly high casualties. <laughs> Just I... such high casualties. I mean, it's kind of good, though, because if like they keep it going at just the right ratio, you'll eventually get a company filled with the best soldiers imaginable. They're certainly, I think, the elite core of your army at this point. Like, you had a different elite core on Galifas. You had, what were they, the, the Alkis Grenadiers? I th- oh, no, not the Alkis Grenadiers. It's the... Oh, yeah, yeah, there was, they, a, there they... was a veteran core to the Alkis Grenadiers. Uh, but never got were, deployed. The reason I I... Uh, no, the reason I deployed the Solent Salioteers was because they're good at siege warfare, and I needed to make it look like I was gearing up for a siege of Zalona before the drop pods hit it. So that's why they got deployed, but obviously it didn't really work because the drop pods. Yeah, there was a whole there, snafu. There was a whole thing. That's the official name for military blunders in this parlance, or in our parlance. We've been calling them snafus. Established it at Albadur. It was the Zalonan snafu. Just these things happen sometimes. Sometimes drop pods deploy out of position. Sometimes cities get put to the sword. Sometimes army regiments suffer 98% casualties. I mean, apart from those last two, like, Snafu was pretty much made for, like, the situations we described. Sure. Okay. So I make that out to be 180 experience points for session number 22. That's 20 points of plot progression. Young Nicholas nicked the young. Uh, the battle over Bar- uh, and the battle over Baddest intensifying. 30 points of character development. That's the crew goes all in. Kuzco realizes his job is futile, and Nazim communicates with another psychic being. 30 points, excellence of roleplay. Young Nicholas goes through the stages of demonic, question mark, corruption in record time, and Koya has had enough of professionalism and takes his ships into melee range. 
<laughs> Sorry, that phrase still gets me. Um, Creed's impromptu uh, and Creed's impromptu army professionalism plus 100 standard. Which brings us on to everyone's favourite part of the session. It's the highlights. Young Nicholas, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, killed a ship with the sword. Well, it's not dead yet. You don't even take heavily maimed the ship with a sword. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fair. Um, spoopy face. Anything else? Um, uh, the ship. <laughs> Oops, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. I'm happy I'm not the only one that had that suddenly go into <laughs> um uh let's see um uh, the emperor watches over me <laughs> all right but I'm putting in in quotation marks, in quotation marks the emperor <laughs> watches over me <laughs> I, for one, am happy that Benji's running such a religiously tolerant ship that he's just okay with this. <laughs> my brain fidge, my chaos gods, I mean. <laughs> to be fair, he's only turning the other way on the brain fridge. Uh, yeah. I, should, I officially don't know about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's some yes minister bullshit <laughs> right there. Any other highlights, Sir Nicholas? Um, I think that's it. Fair, fair. That'll do. Benji, do you have oh, a uh, brain map. Sorry, brain map. Brain map. Okay. Any other highlight? Uh, Benji, do you have any highlights for that session? All the spares over interior design choices. Sorry, Nicholas, you're um, <laughs> echoing. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Thank you. Fair, fair. Anything else? Almost a Cretaceous period. Almost. So oh, close. close. What were we, one or two out? Well, just one, one out. We got two yeah. ones, yeah. Ooh. Dude, Nazim can lead. We've had a Cretaceous yeah. period. And then we've got Nazim can lead the murder, but he cannot command the murder. <laughs> That's excellent phrasing. No one commands the murder. Mm. You really don't. You sort of point them at things, and then you just go, let them go. I like the murder. We start with Astartes' weapon spec. Oh, sorry, never mind. Yeah. So, I missed something. Anything else? Uh, don't think I'm just about to phrase stuff. Uh, I, I think that's me, me done for. Not, sh- not sure if I could. We can try and circle yeah, back to you. Yeah, it's maybe see what Maybe circle back. We'll see what. All right. Uh, Ollie, you have any highlights for that session? Um, Nick leaves the. Uh, Nick leaves the Havoc squad to die. No, to perish. It sounds more gas gianty. I didn't leave you to die. I tried to help. After I reminded you. <laughs> yeah, right. even then, you only did it once and then went, well, he'll figure it out. <laughs> you can uh, even see that his other squads are pinned down. Like, you directly know that he. And how many Akareth are moving in on his position. Uh, <laughs> I only had time for one roll. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's entirely fair. You know, you just prioritize the big gun over Mackie's life. People messaging him next session. It's, it's not fine. like you've been searched with uh, searched. It's not like you've been serving with him for two decades at this point. Uh, any other highlights, Ollie? Um, uh, <laughs> um, the grenade guy just runs there, runs back, potentially runs in again. Poor grenade guard. I can't remember. I know we didn't um, clarify it explicitly, but in my head canon, he's definitely one of the seven people who volunteered to stay behind. Poor bastard. Grenade guard stays behind. Corporal Gren. <laughs> oh, quick question. Astarte's weapon specialization. Did I have to buy that for Volkite weaponry, or do we just say no, I started? You, you get it for free. Uh, you get Volkite for free and Bolter for free. Ah. You usually just get Bolter, but in this day and age, you're trained in both, so we just give you both. Oh, okay. I don't know if the current crop of them are trained in them as standard, but you definitely would be because you were it's, you were trained early. It's still the first twenty years of the Crusades. So the Volkites are starting to run thinner, but 
they're still in relatively common use. So you, I would say everyone's probably still trained in it, but not everyone gets issued one. But the they've not quite accepted that the bolter is the weapon of the future at this point yet. Fair, cool. Uh, I don't have anything else to add. I'm afraid. I uh... I mean that's fair. You you weren't here for a lot of the session, and I don't think there's any like law on that. That's just my my take for the record. Um, cool. Or if there is, it's buried deep in new codexes that I'm not familiar with because I'm an old Makes and sense. impoverished grognard. Um, any highlights for that session, Carl? Not questioning the spoopy goop voice even once. That's unfair. He did question it three, maybe four times, and then he did exactly. ask questions. Yeah, he directly asked it questions. I thought, okay, what different kind of questioning? Took the like, answers as face value. Yeah, 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 like taking the face at face value. That doesn't have anything else, does it? Well, it had multiple faces. Exactly, just take it at face value, and there's lots of faces. So the value is obviously quite high. I really hate that that logically follows. It. <laughs> not what that phrase means. <laughs> Any other highlights, Carl? Um, like a bag of weasels in a knife death match. Hmm. Uh, taking away my precious episode titles. I mean, it can still be the title. I think it's also a highlight. No, nah, I, I try to have the highlights and the titles be different. Um... I don't know why, really, honestly. No one listens to these, but like me, Benji, and sometimes yourself. But uh, to my mind, it looks less neat if the uh, highlight and the uh, if a highlight and the episode title are the same thing. Um, cool. Any other highlights, Carl? Uh, intimidating with the biggest stick. I don't even remember the context for that one. Uh, it was when Benji was effectively get out of the way or I will just shoot you all. <laughs> oh dear. Fucking a load of angry knights at the pub screaming, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough as other knights try and drag them back on the opposite yeah. side. A giant cruiser screaming, fuck around and find out, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> Give me an excuse. I'll take all your knight suits. Uh, yeah. Um, anything else, Carl? Fly me closer so I can hit them with our ship. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I've not laughed at that meme in years. <laughs> the upgraded version. It wasn't even my ship, it was the flotilla. He ordered 12 capital ships to ram at the same time. Not even ram, like belly flop the enemy whilst g- barraging them the entire way down. Yeah, yeah, let's update that to flotilla then. I do like that word, it's nice, I don't know why, it's just it, flotilla. It is a fun word, isn't it? It's the tiller at the end that makes it, like, exotic right. yet approachable. It's just something about it. Yeah. Um, any other highlights, Carl? Yeah, that's it for me, thanks. Cree, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, I think we're mine, actually. Covered. That's fair. Okay, uh, Benji, did you think of your alternative? I think, I think... No, I think I'll cover the rest of them. That's fair. Do I have any extra highlights to add? I don't know. I don't think I've got anything. I think it was a very good session. I, I was I was really pleased with that. I'm really looking forward to seeing how next session's going to go. Someone's massive capital ship's going to get blown up. I'll say that much. I don't know whose it's going to be, necessarily. Rock on the Admech, really, the Admech, the Mechanicum Relief Force. <laughs> Explorer to ship. Just flying directly into the gas giant after goofing its piloting role. Um, does anyone have any final words for... The- oh yeah, thank you for a lovely session number 22, and does anyone have any final words for the recording? I'm going to steal the shit out of those knights. <laughs>